laugh. I just clicked live. People missed your uh, Gaza strippers <laughs> <laughs> remark. Where can they find that one out on Twitter? Yeah, on Twitter, on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> All right, TikTok. Time to rock. Check AP's Twitter so you can hear his remark about uh, Gaza strippers. <laughs> You got all these Hamas who they're, they're acting like thugs, but they're sitting there in their uh, they're sitting there in their uh, Victoria's Secret undergarments and uh, not looking good. Not looking good at all. Hey, yo, AP, how's it going? Good, good, good. How are you doing? How's it going? What's up? What's been going on? What's been going on? You heard about these congressional hearings? That's what we're going to be checking out. No, never heard of any of it. So <laughs> you got these congressional hearings going on where they uh, they bring in the presidents of these universities, Harvard, MIT, um, Penn, so University of Pennsylvania. And they, they brought all these presidents in and they're like, hey, you guys need to condemn genocide, calls for genocide. And the presidents of these universities are like, eh, I don't know, kind of depends on the context. And everyone in Congress, is like, wait, what? What? What did you say? Yeah, yeah. It depends on the context. And they keep saying, they keep saying over and over. I mean, uh, there, there are too many clips to go. There was like five and a half hours or something like that of stuff. I took a couple of the clips um, from from particular people, but uh, uh, it was it was so weird that they're they're saying that what they're actually saying. The the takeaway from what the presidents of these universities were saying was, um. It's only when it's it's only it only violates our policies once it turns into conduct. In other words, this the saying it, the, the calling for genocide, as long as you're not doing it. And there was one point when when a congresswoman, when the president of uh, I think it was president of Harvard, was like ah, it depends on if it turns into no no no. It was it was the president of Penn? Um, she was saying ah, it only only when it becomes conduct is that not allowed. Then it's not allowed. And then she goes, well, what do you mean conduct? You mean like when someone actually does the genocide, that's when it becomes a, that's when it's against your policies. So anyway, it was. Uh, it, it is, it is very strange. I mean, I saw, I saw uh, much of those clips, I believe. Uh, and the, and the reaction, of course, of the questioner, it, it, it is really, really bizarre. And we, <laughs> we have to, we have to have a look at that. Oh, we're going to have a look uh, and we're actually going to start. We're going to start with. Um, they gave students at some of the universities where there's some problems with uh, protesters and so on. They gave some Jewish students an opportunity to explain what things are like now on college campuses mm -hmm. for Jews, for Jews. And I see there, uh, I'm seeing in the chat that a bunch of people have uh, have seen some of the footage. All right. So should we go ahead and jump into what some of the students are saying? Yes. Let us jump right into it. When you say let us jump into that, do you tell them that when you text me messages, you spell let us as lettuce? <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, that's, that, that's what he I spells do. it lettuce like bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> that's ap's sense of humor yeah that's it's what weird. i do it's weird the things that i think are funny like like yesterday when i posted that uh i made that video public and then someone the, the video is about why allah revealed the quran in arabic and so on and uh talk about the arabic of the quran and then someone someone comments and says arabic more like error bic and uh <laughs> <laughs> it's like for some reason like that little dumb gum that cracked me up. Um, it's it's always fun playing with words. That is that is good humor. I love it. All right. So, uh, all right. Let's go ahead and jump into some of this. Let's do. So these are some of the students. See, these are some of the students who were brought before Congress to explain to Congress what's going on on college campuses if you're Jewish. And first, before we head out, I want to introduce Talia Khan from MIT to share her story. Talia. Thank you so much. Oh, man. Oh, this is coming out of one of my headphones. So anyone who's listening, is it coming out of one? Well, I, one? No, I hear it on both sides. You did? Hear just, yeah. That's weird. Okay. Well, it's coming out of one of my headphones. No idea why. But if you're hearing it's it, fine, then, then we're good. All right. 
Fox and Representative Stefanik for inviting me here today. My name is Talia Khan. I am an undergraduate alumna of MIT and a current graduate student at MIT. I am the daughter of a Jewish mother and an Afghan Muslim immigrant father. I am the proud president of the MIT Israel Alliance, and I am a Jewish student currently immersed in an extremely toxic anti-Semitic atmosphere at MIT. The MIT administration, namely President Sally Kornbluth, has failed to address the crisis of rampant anti-Semitism on campus. There is a radical anti-Israel group at MIT called the CAA. In recent weeks, the CAA's anti-Semitic rhetoric has shifted the culture on campus to such an extreme of intolerance that 70% of MIT's Jewish students polled feel forced to hide their identities and perspectives. An Israeli student whose identity and personal info was sold online for a bounty has not left his dorm room in weeks out of fear due to death threats. For my part, I was... Hey, yo, guys, you're saying, um, yeah, so AP, you're a liar, first of all. Why? Uh, what? Oh, Why am I lying? Because it is playing out of one side. What? I hear it on both sides. Oh, okay. You must have your thing uh, uh, set up a bit differently. Yeah, for everyone who's saying, uh, set it to mono, there's no there's no fixing it now. It's a, it's a video I've imported. So there's, um, um, in fact, I actually want to, I actually want to stop this. I want to pull up a different video and see if this is all the videos or just that one. That's so weird. Why do I hear it on both sides here? This is, and everyone else is not. Because you're special. I am. Let me, let, let me check During these difficult days, okay. I have felt the bonds okay. of our community strain. All right. So it is, uh, it works on the others, just not this one clip where they had the audio screwed up. All right, guys, we will. Uh, head out, I want to. We'll listen to a little bit of this, but MIT not much. We understand, guys, Talia. that it's a... Uh, I mean, anyone who's listening on a computer or something like that will not have a problem. Thank if you're you listening so on much, headphones like me, you probably see a problem. Fox and Representative but we'll listen a little bit of this, and then we'll today. cut to some of the other ones. My name is Talia Khan. I am an undergraduate alumna of MIT and a current graduate student at MIT. I am the daughter of a... I'll fast forward. ...a group at MIT called the CAA. In recent weeks... Hey, Snowy, yes, I know you hear one side. I've said it like eight times. You don't need to tell us. It's only on one side. We know. <laughs> and we know that some people are saying they hear it on both sides. Okay, so different people have different audio set up. The way I have it set up, it's only playing on one side. So if you have some sort of system that is making what's happening on one side happen to both sides, then it's working. Uh, if not, if you're like me, you're going to hear it on one side. Live with it, guys. There are worse problems in the world today. There are people- are I mean, think about this. You've got Jews complaining about how they're being attacked on college campuses, and you guys are like, but my ear's being attacked by only hearing on one side. Come on, guys. Priority. All right. <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, yeah, so this isn't me. This is the way uh, I, I downloaded this from. Um, so, yeah, this is. Uh, I want to see which channel. So this is Forbes. That's. I think, I, I think some of my other videos are from Forbes, too. I don't know why they just screwed up on this one. Yep, they screwed up on this one. Amateur hour for Forbes. All right, here we go. Terrible. CIA's anti-Semitic rhetoric has shifted the culture on campus to such an extreme of intolerance that 70% of MIT's Jewish students polled feel forced to hide their identities and perspectives. Whoa, you catch that? 70, what percent? She said 70% of Jewish students at MIT are, hiding the, are now hiding the fact that they're Jews. interesting i mean it's it's it shouldn't be coming to that right so people people talk so much about um all the time about how um i don't know never again we can't allow such uh such things uh no hate no this no that but they focused so much on other kinds of hate that apparently when it comes to to this one to the actual one that we uh, that we really experienced some big disaster with in recent history they somehow let it happen again it, it's it's so bizarre it doesn't even it doesn't make sense and this really i would say we've talked about this before but this really makes a slam dunk case for why jews need their own nation right I yes mean, absolutely absolutely so this was the idea 
before World War II, that was the criticism of Zionism back then was, what are you guys talking about? You're, you're in all kinds of countries. Your countries will protect you, man. What are you complaining about? And then, uh, no, turns out uh, the, what, what was regarded as one of the most, uh, most culturally advanced uh, nations the world had ever seen uh, just started rounding them up in cattle cars and taking them and sticking them in ovens and so on. And so then they were like, ah, guys, uh, you see why we kind of need our own spot here? Can we just have one little spot, one little spot that's just ours where we're actually allowed to defend ourselves and we don't have to depend on other people who might put us into camps, uh, not depend on them for our safety? And then so you've got Israel now and you've got people com complaining uh, about Israel and calling for the destruction of Israel. And then the thought is, well, you don't need your own nation. You could be in other places. And you just see it's like a switch can go off and everyone starts to say, ah, let's round up the Jews and massacre them. Pretty wild stuff, man. It, it, is, it is really insane. It's, it's like uh, in, in pop culture, we are told repeatedly, uh, we were repeatedly told about, about this. But they repeatedly tell you about this and they they do all of these slogans and whenever somebody talks about uh you know bigotry and uh demonizing and otherizing and dehumanizing others and racism and all of that people always go to the one reference that we have they always go to nazis they say uh you know you are nazis you are acting like nazis literally a nazi literally like hitler just like hitler and so on but then when it comes to the actual victims of those Nazis that everyone always wants to talk about, that everyone compares everyone to, then suddenly they don't care about protecting them just as much. They care more about protecting those who want to attack those people, who want to attack those Jews, those victims. It is, it is, um, I mean, you see it right now. There is an insane amount of uh, anti, anti Jewish, uh, you know, attitudes and behaviors on social media in the world uh on the left also on the right but but on the left where it supposedly is not expected to happen that's supposedly the anti-racist anti-oppression anti uh, you know pro pro uh accepting and and compassion uh side but to them this is acceptable Hating Jews is uh, acceptable. Blaming Jews is acceptable. Calling for genocide against Jews is acceptable. Putting them in danger is acceptable. Because you know why? Because Jews happen to be um, a, a Western culture now. They are white now. So uh, <laughs> they don't get the whole privilege of, of being considered a, 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 um, a group that needs your help, your compassion. And it's um, the creepiest part to me is how people have been so thoroughly conditioned to be outraged at what they're ever, whatever they're told to be outraged at at any given moment. That, uh, you, you know, basically, if you're a student on a college campus, you wake up one day and it's, uh, hey, this is the thing that you're supposed to be outraged about today. And if you're not, you're evil and we're going to uh, we're, we're going to marginalize you. And so you want to be part of the, the the correct group. You want to be part of the good group. Then here's what you're outraged about today. And then a week later, it's something else they're supposed to be outraged about. But uh, th they're they've been so thoroughly conditioned that they can just find out, OK, now you're now you're mad at Jews. Wait, what? Now you're mad at Jews, we said. OK, yeah, down with Jews, down with Jews. And they'll just roll with it. And uh, anyway, that's uh, that's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of creepy to me. All right, let's check out a little more of what she said. Yes, guys, this is going to be, as we're going through this uh, initial, uh, some of this initial clip, Forbes, morons that they are, only have audio on one side for people who are listening to headphones. An Israeli student whose identity and personal info was sold online for a bounty has not left his dorm room in weeks out of fear due to death threats. For my part, I was forced to leave my study group for my doctoral exams halfway through the semester because my group members told me that the people at the Nova Music Festival deserved to die because they were partying on stolen land. After you heard that before, you? right? Yeah, you heard so that before. I, saw, I, I read that stuff before as well. <laughs> so she had to leave her study group because they were saying that uh, those people deserved to die. 
people died on October 7th. Postdoc at MIT said that Jewish Israelis want to enslave the world in a global apartheid system. He falsely claimed that Israel harvests Palestinian organs and implied that the, quote, average Israeli is a Nazi. The DEI officer of his department replied by telling us that nothing he said was hate speech and that the organ harvesting conspiracy theory was, quote, confirmed. What? Day after day, the MIT administration has failed to enforce its own rules on anti-Semitic actors, such as the interfaith chaplain intimidating Jewish students, DEI staff publicly declaring that Israel has no right to exist, faculty dismissing student concerns for their safety by telling them that if they are scared, they should just go back to Israel. Right. <laughs> Do you hear what they're being told? If you if you're scared here, if you if you students are scared here on the campus of MIT, and you got a problem, if you're if you're if you're uncomfortable, go back to Israel. Wait, what? I thought I thought Israel didn't have a right to exist, people. <laughs> and and by the way, you know what would happen? You know the response you would get if you told um, if you told uh, an Arab to you know just go back to your country, right? Mm -hmm. And that is the great hypocrisy in all of this, especially with uh, the president's talking about, well, it's only when it turns into conduct that would actually commit genocide that it becomes a problem. They would never tolerate any of this. About, uh, we will, uh, we will stop Muslims. the genocide. We will condemn it after it happens, of course. Yeah. yeah. Matter of fact, I don't know if uh, I don't know if I pulled this clip up, but it's one of the clips I saw. There was a congressman who said because uh, they were they were the presidents were complaining about anti-Semitism and Islamophobia. And we got that we've got both problems. And the the uh, the congressman, he called them out and he just goes, uh, he goes, uh, do, do you have students? Do you have large numbers of students gathering around calling for uh, calling for a nation of Muslims to be destroyed? Do you, do you have that? Is that a thing? And he just broke it out. So are, are you actually comparing these things? One calling for calling for an extermination of a group of people and a, the destruction of a state? What, what, what do you have that's comparable to that going on about about Muslims? And of course, nothing. It's always fake. Now, it, it, so the thing is also when they say uh, they are in stolen land, that's why they deserve to die. That's why they deserve the attacks that are coming for them. Which which Muslims uh, are not on stolen land? Yes, Tell me that. exactly. Name exactly, them. Exactly, exactly. And, but also, um, it's not even true that it's stolen land. That's complete nonsense and ahistorical and shows a great misunderstanding of, uh, of, of history, of very basic history. But even if we were to assume that it is true, that they have a point, that it is stolen land, that they are on, on stolen land, by that same standard, you as an American are also on stolen land. Mm-hmm. By that standard, you are also on stolen land. All, all these, all these college students oh. are on stolen land. Yeah, so they all deserve to be killed, then, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> that would that's the takeaway from that I get from them. Oh, God, this is so this is ridiculous. Man. All right. CAA protesters blocking the hallways, storming the offices of the MIT Israel internship offices, and harassing the staff and faculty there and inviting dangerous outsiders to campus to join them in yelling hateful and violent chants. This is the same climate of anti-Semitism that has led to massacres of Jews throughout the centuries. This is not- And, and by the way, that, that's the, for me, that's the reason we keep talking about. This is exactly the sort of situations that led to massacres of Jews in the past. We can all be worried about a, a hypoth you know, hypothetical uh, massacre against some group that someone's criticizing or something like that. With Jews, it just ha it happens over and over and over again down through history. And so when people start saying the exact same things that were used in the past to justify massacres of Jews, you, you kind of have to take that pretty seriously when it happens. Just harassment. This is our lives on the line. The MIT administration has punted disciplinary processes to a faculty committee on discipline, which has thus far not received a single one of our complaints. MIT admin has even failed to staff a new task force against hate, which will duly combat anti-Semitism and Islamophobia. This atmosphere is intolerable. Jewish students do not believe that the MIT administration has done an adequate job to make students feel safe on campus. President Kornbluth, Please let me go back to being a scientist. Let me go back to being a student. 
Dang. I don't want to have to keep advocating for Jewish student safety on campus. It's not my job. It's your job. Please do your job and act now. Ouch. And if you can't, I'm asking Congress to do it for you. Thank you. Ouch. <laughs> Whoa. Doesn't that suck? You go to you go to MIT to be a scientist, and then <laughs> you can't even you can't even go to your study group because they're saying that that Jews deserve what happens to them and so on. And now you have to be testifying before Congress about what's happening to Jews. It's like, hey, I went there to become a scientist, not to do this. Could you please fix this? Could you please fix it to where? Wow. wow. I mean, well, you, you did go to study there, but nobody ever told you that you were going to be safe. You know? Yeah. So. It, it, was, it wasn't in your contract. It wasn't in your yeah. contract. Did we put that in your missions letter that you're going to be safe from uh, from being genocided? Huh? No, we didn't tell you that. <laughs> Uh, this is uh, something that's going to come up. Uh, these are the same universities that banned Steven Crowder. Yeah, you can you can exchange Steven Crowder for all kinds of things that these say, exact same universities ban. In fact, that's going to come up. I don't know if we're actually, uh, I don't know how many clips we'll get through. I have, I pulled up a bunch of clips. Um, this is the long one. But uh, yeah. I haven't heard it, of a ban before. Oh. Yeah, it's been pointed out. It's been pointed out. Yeah, one of the one of the congressmen he starts asking about professors who were who lost their jobs and so on over having the wrong view on something, um, and it's in response to these presidents of of uh, universities saying, "Well, you know, as long as the as long as the words calling for genocide don't lead to actual conduct, then then you know it's freedom of speech. We have a high view of freedom of expression. Wait a minute, you got you guys have a high view of freedom of expression." Are you serious? And then starts bringing up some. Uh, yeah. All right. So she's done. Let's see who's up next. Again, we. Uh, so there see. are no safe spaces for Jews, I assume. Then. Nope. Can, I mean, can you imagine that? I mean, we heard about safe spaces in the past, but it was like safe spaces from hearing anything you didn't like. Uh -huh. And so there's a space over there that you can run to and you won't hear anything you don't like over there. But we're to the point where like Jews are actually going to need safe spaces on campuses to protect them from mobs who want to destroy them. Do they do they even I mean, do they at least do uh, like trigger warnings before they say these things like a trigger warning? All Israelis deserve to be killed. You know, like that. <laughs> but it's crazy because I mean, students complain about microaggressions that you're saying all these things that are like these microaggressions. These are actual calls for genocide. <laughs> that's not a, that's yeah. not a microaggression. Wow. All right. This is wild stuff here. Audio Thank still you all on for one side. For giving me How does someone not the fix opportunity that? to share with you my story? My name is Bella Ingber. I am a junior at NYU, and I'm going to try to answer the following question for you from my personal experiences. What is it like to be a Jew at NYU? Being a Jew at NYU is walking to class and passing torn and defaced posters of innocent hostages with the words occupier and murderer written across their faces. It is going to Bope's library to study and being interrupted by unauthorized protests where students and faculty call for a globalized intifada revolution, an incitement to violence against Jews everywhere, and a call for the annihilation of the Jewish state and my friends and family who live there. Being a hold, Jew hold, at up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. You know, uh, Intifada, um, some some idiots in the West or some idiots throughout the world who um, who sympathize with the idea of, you know, rebellion, standing up against justice, standing up against the oppressor and all of that. The, uh, the These people often uh, think of the Intifada also as something like, uh, you know, some some rebellion to bring justice. It's, it's you know, it's a noble thing to stand up and advocate for. It feels just like in one of those movies when we try to save the world by going out and protesting. The Intifada, uh, the idea behind the Intifadas were not... Um, a, a seeking for justice. They were not um, a rebellion to just you know be, be treated better and be free and independent and all of that. The the, the idea behind the intifadas, which by the way uh, didn't didn't go very very nicely, um, where that Israel in its entirety is an illegal state 
that Jews do not deserve to live in this land, that this land is holy, that it is um, meant for the for the for the Arabs, for the Muslims, and that uh, that that the Palestinians must now rise up, rise up to overcome and to defeat them and annihilate the Zionists and the Zionist entity, you know, to completely destroy and get rid of them. It's not a quest for justice or for rebellion, for freedom, because you are so oppressed. The, op the only oppression that they see there is that Israel exists, that they can't take that. That is considered oppression. So it, it is directly a violent call to annihilate the other side. You could just as well um, stand up and you know support a um, a separatist, I don't know, Nazi movement that says we are sick of we we are sick of uh, these people existing. We must rise up and annihilate them completely because this is our land. It's 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 the very same thing. This is just ridiculous, man. Yeah, and uh, as far as the consistency part. I mean, can you can you imagine these university presidents putting up with it if Muslim students were walking to class and there's like, a, you know, death to Muslims spray painted on the sides of buildings and stuff going to their classes. And yeah. there, are, there are protesters calling for the annihilation of Muslim nations and so on. They wouldn't put up with that for five seconds. It, it, would, it, would, it would be crushed instantly. But they put yeah. up with it when it's about Jews. And that's what's uh, that's what's concerning here. That's what's concerning. All right, so we'll listen to a little more of this. Yes, guys, we do not need your complaints. We know the audio is crappy thanks to Forbes. It's just this clip, but I did want to watch a little more of this clip. No, I can't do it by changing an audio setting. This is the video. It's been imported. There is no setting that fixes this. So live with it. There are worse problems in the world to deal with. All right. You is being surrounded by students and faculty who support the murder and kidnapping of Jews because after all, as they say, resistance is justified when people are occupied. It is being surrounded by social justice warriors and self-proclaimed feminists whose calls for justice end abruptly when the rape victims are Jews. <laughs> being a Jew You've seen that hashtag, me too, unless you're a Jew? I've seen that a bunch yes, of times. Yes, yeah. yes. That if you're, if you're a Jewish victim, well, you deserve it or, or you, you can't be trusted and so we're not going to believe you. And by, by the way, um, we have now significantly more, overwhelmingly significantly more evidence of uh, you know, sexual assault, of, of rape cases during the during October seven by Hamas and uh, Palestinian individuals and groups um, than we ever had for any of the um, you know Me Too celebrities that <laughs> that people stood up for and 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 advocated for. Is that like we we have we have tons of it now. We have. Um, we have eyewitnesses, we have first responders, rescue teams, we have statements from uh, interrogations from Hamas members themselves. There's just so much. We have camera footage where they refer to, uh, to, to Israeli girls, Israeli women as concubines, and so on. So this is just, this is ridiculous that they, that they will then just completely disregard that because, well, it's, it's Israel, you know, mm -hmm. I don't care. I don't care. It's the oppressed people who are doing that. You know, they are being forced to go under and, and rape the Jewish people. But mm -hmm. NYU has meant being physically assaulted in NYU's library by a fellow student while I was wearing an American Israeli flag and having my attacker still roam freely throughout the campus. Dang, so she's been attacked and her attacker still walks around campus like nothing's happened because they won't punish. Mm -hmm. Being a Jew at NYU is experiencing how diversity, equity, and inclusion is not a value that NYU extends to its Jewish students. Since October 7th, the unmistakable anti-Semitism that I've experienced on campus is reminiscent of the Jew hatred I've heard about from my grandparents, Holocaust survivors, who experienced firsthand the deafening silence of their neighbors in Poland and Germany when the Nazis first rose to power. As anti-Semitic rhetoric and actions became more and more acceptable, their community's shops were looted, their synagogues defaced, and finally, their families were taken away and perished in concentration camps. Ah, she's actually making a, I mean, she's making a really important point there that people that, you know, leading up to, leading up to World War II, uh, it, it became clear what the Germans were doing to the Jews, what their intentions were. And their neighbors 
sat back and did nothing. And it just starts off with their stores and so on being looted and their neighbors do nothing and don't and don't stand against it. And she's pointing out the same thing is going on right now. It's not to that extent, but it's the same thing where if it's against a Jew, we're going to keep we're just going to sit back and watch and not do anything. And it's like but it's like some of the most prestigious universities in the U.S. and in the world. And they're just, eh, well, you know, you're Jewish. You shouldn't be complaining. This is nuts, man. This is nuts. If, if this led to a massive genocide, they would be like, how did this happen? How, we don't how know. Did we, how, how did, did we, this, how could what? this happen? We have no idea. And if it's we crazy. Knew, we could have fixed it. Yeah. That's what I mean. It's crazy. Every every generation looks back at previous generations and going, how did they let that happen? And then when you're doing it, it's like, oh, okay, this is how it happened. Today. Let me, uh, let me fast forward. Just wanted to get a clip of this guy here. This nobody a, knows how that happens. We still nobody knows. It's it will stay a mystery. For, of, it's a total mystery. Let's get a little bit of the, uh, this guy. He's got a cool voice. Well, I'm both honored and thankful. The 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 one side audio doesn't do justice to how cool this dude's voice is. Wow. To be here, I'm I impressed. should not be here today. I should be studying for my upcoming finals. I should be taking in every moment, every experience as an undergraduate student in my senior year of college. You can't, you're Jewish. So while I should not be here today, I am. Because 36 hours ago, I, along with most of campus, sought refuge in our rooms. As classmates and professors chanted proudly for the genocide of Jews while igniting smoke bombs and defacing school property. Students and professors, students and professors. The neighboring university's president immediately released a statement describing this as a brazen display of anti-Semitism. He went on saying, silence in the face of last night's demonstration of anti-Semitism and hate near our doorstep is not an option for me. Well, the doorstep of the neighboring university is in fact Penn. And in fact, Penn's president did choose silence. The neighboring university's president swiftly denounced the incident, and yet our president cannot. Because the glorious October 7th, and you're a dirty little Jew, you deserve to die, are words said not by Hamas, but by my classmates and professors. And Dang. This is nuts. You can actually pick a university. You can pick a, a wonderful, amazing university and go up to a Jewish student and say, hey, tell us how things are going on here. And it's stuff like this. They have to hide in the rooms. They have to hide their identities. Uh, and they're being told they deserve to die. Because despite all of this, I am adamant and hopeful that we will not accept, least of all embrace, this horrific new normal on college campuses today. On October 7th, Israel was attacked. Since October 7th, American Jews have been under attack. My name is Ayal Yacobi, and I am a proud American studying at the University of Pennsylvania. I love Penn. Dang. So one of the, so the girl who spoke first, she was from, she was at MIT. Then a girl spoke from NYU and this is at university of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And this must really suck. So, I mean, th this dude, this is insane because these students testify right in front of these, uh, the presidents of the universities about the stuff that's going on. And then when the presidents of the university, I mean, he's, he's a student at the university of Pennsylvania and He's talking about the president of the University of Pennsylvania doing nothing. She's sitting right there. And then when she's asked if it's OK to call for genocide against Jews on her campus, she's like, well, as long as it doesn't turn into actual conduct, actually genociding them, eh, we believe in freedom of expression. Wild stuff, man. Maybe she was playing a game on her phone or something. Oh. That would be messed up. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, I believe in freedom of expression. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've wanted to attend this university since before I can remember. I'm here because the pen I attend today is unrecognizable from the pen I once used to know. Penn, once renowned for groundbreaking discoveries like the mRNA vaccine, is now a chilling landscape of hatred and hostility. Our university, revered for its pursuit of knowledge, has devolved into an arena where Jewish students tiptoe through their days, uncertain and unsafe. Jews. The situation at Penn has escalated into a full-blown crisis, with students openly asserting their intentions to proceed with plans with or without university permission. During COVID, strict guidelines governed everything from class attendance and graduation talk walks. 
Yet now, when students and faculty defy policies to intimidate Jewish students, where is the same resolute enforcement? Yeah, so he's pointing, uh, this is another issue with the, with the consistency. He's pointing out, wait a minute, uh, when it was COVID, you guys were very careful about enforcing every single little rule. Uh, yes. But now, now, uh, even if people are breaking the rules, even if people are openly breaking rules, you, you don't say a word. Why? Well, it's it's just Jews. Because it's so. against Jews. It's against Jews. Yeah. It's just For the true. past three weeks inside Houston Hall, our student center, an anti-Semitic headquarters has been erected with signs spreading Hamas propaganda. The organizers, both pen affiliated and not, were initially asked to leave as they are trespassing on campus property. Well, three weeks later, they are still sleeping there and countless Jewish students have been harassed, yet the anti-Semitic dormitory remains. Clearly, both a disregard for school policies and permission to disregard them by a university unwilling to do anything. Not only are tensions palpable, but there have also been materialized actions taken to intimidate and harm students. A bomb threat against Hillel, a swastika spray painted, the Hillel and Chabad houses vandalized, a professor posting the armed wing of Hamas's logo on Facebook, a Jewish student accosted, Jews are Nazis, etched adjacent to Penn's Jewish fraternity house. Why doesn't the university... Jews are Nazis. Who were we watching who talked about that? Talking about like people understand what a what a sore spot the Nazis bringing up Nazis are and then calling Jews Nazis. And they're putting that on the they're putting that beside the Kabad house at the University of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So they put it they put it on the side of the Kabad house. Jews are Nazis there. This gets this gets two point per 2.7 percent of me in an uproar man yeah 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 Behold according to the purpose. according to one test it's like 12 percent of me but it's probably probably wrong but still i feel no it. roll with that man okay i will you're you're way more jewish than i am then okay Traders of such acts accountable is the university fearful that they may offend those who wish to intimidate and harass their fellow students Penn's ambivalence fuels a crisis uh -huh. That has shattered my academic sanctuary. Dang. Policies meant to safeguard us have become hollow promises. And let us be clear, if they fail Jewish students today, tomorrow they will fail the rest of us. Nonetheless, I refuse to go back to 1939 when Jews had to hide their religious symbols and hide who they are due to the intimidation and harassment of us. Hey, hey I want to quickly, quick, quick, um, we, we talked about this before, before we went live, but uh, so today there was a, um, this this whole th these images came out of uh, Israel arresting and uh, stripping a bunch of men, and uh, you know having them out, uh, sit outside and wait. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there is now a discussion on who these people are. But uh, so that happened. I called it Gaza strippers. Uh, hey, hey, oh, dude, you. Someone has to Photoshop hijab there when, there when, he's, <laughs> when he strips when he strips in front of the Chinese embassy and he's like, well, let me do a little dance for you, huh? all you Chinese people. But but uh, <laughs> since since that image has has come out of these uh, men sitting outside on the street, uh, you know, the the IDF basically um, you know uh, uh, detaining them before moving them somewhere else quite well alive people some of them quite fat um that, really that fat. is that is that is now becoming a huge uh a, a huge scene like people are like these are shocking scenes you see how israel treats humans you see how they treat people the you same people israel were completely quiet the same people were completely quiet about images of naked women with their bare breasts on a pickup truck who is uh sat on by um by terrorists and we're being who, spit on who ride her through the streets while people come from left and right and spit on her and beat her body and all that they they, they were quiet about those images mm -hmm. what's 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 a horrible scene what's apparently traumatic to them is a bunch of suspects of terrorism alive well and alive sitting outside with their underwear on that is horrible 
that is horrible. What Hamas did on that day, which we have all seen, is not horrible. This is just one of those issues. This is just how messed up these people's standards are. <laughs> yeah. Um, <sighs> and this is especially interesting because it's connected to what we were just talking about on your channel the other day, where Jews are held to some insane standard that we would not hold anyone else to. Um, hey, there's just a massive terrorist attack on you. You go into people who are actually hiding among civilian women and children because they want to maximize civilian casualties, and you still end up with a uh, with a civilian death to soldier death of around two to one, which is, I mean, that's pretty common. That's that's pretty common in wars. Uh, and Jews are condemned for that. And they're basically told, since you're getting those kinds of numbers and you're, there's, no, uh, there's no way around it, if you're actually going after Hamas, what you really need to do is leave Hamas alone. Uh, should have been a ceasefire right after the terrorist attack, right after they came and slaughtered a bunch of your people and then ran away with all those hostages. Should have been a ceasefire. Let them get away with it. That's what they're told. No one would ever hold any other nation to that, to that kind of standard, but that's the standard they're held to. But then... With Muslims, it's the flip. It's the complete reverse. It doesn't matter what you do, how horrible it is. We will not hold you to any standard at all. There is no standard that we will hold you to. If you're Hamas, there is no standard whatsoever that we will hold you to. If you're a Muslim student calling for the annihilation of Jews, we will not hold you to even like university standards of, of conduct. We, we're not holding you to anything. And so you're Jewish. We hold you to this standard that no one could possibly live up to in the world today and function, I mean, and still exist as a, uh, as a nation. And if you're on the other side, you're, you're not held to any standard at all. Interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. All right. Let's, um, let's switch. Let's switch. So, so to everyone who would like to hear more of what this guy says, the complainers in the chat are ruining it for all of you. We're actually going to go to clips where the audio works better. All right, you ready? Yes. Let's see here. During these difficult... Um, ooh, actually, I do This isn't by Forbes. This isn't a Forbes clip. Oh, okay. I don't know if all the clips work then because some of those other clips will be by Forbes. If all the clips are like this, I will probably just, uh, just uh, count this live stream a total loss and destroy it and then redo it with uh, better audio clips. Um, so this is a, this is like a little compilation of what the presidents said as far as like their opening remarks and you got some clips on it. Then they get kind of cross-examined by congressmen and that's where you end up. That's where they end up acknowledging that calls for genocide are actually okay as long as it doesn't lead to conduct. Well, not, they're not okay. They'll say, yes, those are bad, but it's okay as far as our policies go. Days, I have so this woman is the uh, president of Harvard University. Felt the bonds of our community strain. In response, I have sought to confront hate while preserving free expression. This is difficult work, and I know that I have not always gotten it right. The free exchange of ideas is the foundation upon which Harvard is built, and safety and well-being are the prerequisites for engagement in our community. Without both of these things, our teaching and research mission founder. As a student of Constitution... So that's her. This is Liz McGill, which... I forget which school she was from. Uh, I think MIT. National democracy... I know that we need both safety and free expression for universities and ultimately democracy to thrive. In these times, these competing principles can be difficult to balance, but I am determined to get it right. And we must get this right. The stakes yeah. are too high. Yeah. Penn would not be what it is without oh, its strong Jewish, Jewish community, Penn. past, like present, thick. and future. While I deplore... Yeah, so uh, notice they're all... This is what's creepy. If you were to listen to them, you're like, oh, you have to you have to you have to keep students safe and respect freedom of expression. That's pretty much what I would say. 
But if you look at what they're actually doing it, what they mean by this, that's where things are really messed up. And you look at the hypocrisy. They don't take this into account. They don't take their freedom of expression concerns. Um, deja vu disciple here puts up, but you can't you can't call someone the wrong pronoun. All right. Yeah, that's when if, if someone is calling someone the wrong pronoun, that's when all of a sudden freedom of expression goes out the window. And all that matters is that you are literally killing this person by calling him or her the wrong pronoun. Um, so, yeah, the hypocrisy is a pretty big issue here, but they're all emphasizing. Nope. When it comes to calling for genocide against Jews, we have to be very careful to protect freedom of expression. All hateful speech, anti-Semitic speech remains in America protected. Free speech stands at the core of the liberal. Did you hear what she just said? Yes. She said, uh, All, yeah, yeah, it's protected. Now, she's correct from like the perspective of the First Amendment. You could be a total racist and spout racism, uh, according to the First Amendment of the United States of America. That doesn't mean that that's that that's allowed in every business or on every college campus or, or things like that. You can actually have rules about conduct and people are being asked about rules of rules of conduct. Uh, but yeah, let, let's just go back. I wanted to make sure I understood that correctly. And, and future. While I deplore all hateful speech, anti-Semitic speech remains in America protected. Free speech stands at the core of the liberal arts education, an education which almost <laughs> Yeah, like 50 years ago. Now? you got, My goodness. Yeah. Uh, uh, one of the congressmen points out that Harvard ranks dead last among American colleges in terms of freedom of speech on campus <laughs> and not being crushed for your ideas. They crush you. They destroy you. They if they find out you made the wrong tweet. They they take away your uh, your acceptance to the university. They'll fire you for having the wrong idea. And so they're dead last. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, all these universities, well, when there's calling for genocide against Jews, we really, really need to protect freedom of expression on our campuses. Wow. Every member of Congress benefited from when they were students. Those who want us to shut down protest language are, in effect, arguing for a speech code. But in practice, speech codes do not work. Problematic uh, are, they, are, they, are, are they giving these responses after they just hear heard what these uh, what, what these what these? Yeah, I, I don't know said? if that, I don't I don't know if that's I don't know if that's I don't know what the order is. But my goodness, matter of fact, there is the long there is the full video that was posted, so we could actually go and find exactly what the order is. But I mean, yeah, you're you're correct. If they just heard these students, in other words, if this, it's one thing if these if these college presidents spoke first and then the students said. And then the students spoke their minds. If they just listen to the students and what they're what they're going through as Jews on their campuses, and they're like, ah, but you know, calls for genocide. We have to protect the freedom of expression of the people we're calling for genocide. But but even even if it's uh, even if they didn't hear what the students said, even if they said these things before that, um, still that would just mean that they are quite clueless of. What is going on? I mean, we have seen it all on we see it on social media. I mean, people outside the whole discussion are exposed to what is happening, to all the slogans, uh, the, the speeches that are that are given at these universities. These people should have some awareness of what is happening at the places that they are, uh, you know, speaking for. This is wild Let's stuff. Say. All right. It's to be countered with other speech and with education. And we are doing that. However, the right to free speech does not extend to harassment, discrimination, or incitement to violence in our community. It doesn't yeah. extend to incitement to violence, but they're they're doing something interesting here. And there's a parallel with what like social media does, especially with you. Um, when they say you can't have incitement to violence. They're not talking about like calls for the annihilation of Israel and so on. That's fine. It's it's in the in the American legal sense of you have to be, you know, targeting a an individual with some sort of like violence, like calling for this person to be killed. That's when you've crossed the line, according to what these uh, uh, presidents of universities are saying. So if you're just calling for the future destruction of Israel, that's fine. If you're saying, hey, let's kill this Jew, then they would step in and say, oh, that's too much. You're calling for, you know, a specific Jew to be killed. This reminds me of the situation with like Ali Dawa, right? 
uh, on social media. So it's it's something similar in that we, if we just hurt someone's feelings, we're accused of hate speech. If we criticize yeah. Muhammad, we're accused of like hate speech and so on. Meanwhile, you've got Ali Dawa actually calling, actually saying, hey, we're working towards a state when we're going to be watching as people like you are executed. Yeah. Uh, you've got Daniel Hakikachu, uh, Jake, the Muslim metaphysician. They all agree that you'd be killed if they get their precious Islamic state that they want. They agree that I'd be killed for blasphemy. You'd be actually be killed for the apostasy and the blasphemy. So you got multiple death sentences on you. I'll be uh, killed twice. Yeah, you've got uh, you've got sh you've got Sheikh Asim Al Hakim explaining jihad. Say, hey, Muslims, we're not strong enough now to take over the world, but right now we need to be preparing and we need to keep preparing for the next couple decades until we get to a point where we're strong enough. Where we got the numbers and we can go door to door telling people either convert, pay us money, pay us off, or or we're executing you. They're all allowed to do this uh, on social media. Why? Because they're not saying, hey, yes, we're gonna we're gonna kill you right now. It's it's, you know, sort of off in the distance. We're going to kill you and all ex-Muslims and all, all everyone who blasphemes and everyone who won't pay us or convert. Yeah, yeah, we're going to we're, we're eventually going to kill you all. And these universities are basically saying the same thing. Yeah, as long as it's like kind of vague <laughs> that you're calling for these people to be annihilated, we'll let that slide. Uh, if you call for violence against a, a, a specific person in a specific context at a specific time, then then you're in trouble. So if I if, if somebody says um, at that university, then, um, yeah, so all, all Muslims uh, simply for what they stand for and what they believe in and identify with, uh, you know, um, deserve to be killed or deserve to die. That is uh, that would be acceptable, I guess. Mm -hmm. OK, I see. I see. Hmm. So, yes. Uh... The rule would suddenly change. We know it. The rule would suddenly change if someone's calling for someone saying we need to if someone were saying, hey, we need to go to a point where we wipe out Muslims. Yeah, we yeah. need to we need to work towards a future that is Muslim free. If someone were saying that. You know, you know, that person would would be destroyed. You know, that person would be destroyed. They would jump in. That person would be kicked out of off a of campus. That person's entire future would be crushed and destroyed. But if it's but if it's only Jews, so that doesn't really matter. Right? If someone were saying, matter of fact, this this should have been brought up instantly. I didn't see all I didn't see all the uh, uh, um, responses from congressmen when they're interviewing these people. But I mean, it should have been brought up instantly. Wait a minute. So if you're saying, if someone's walking across campus and 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 starts saying that trans people need to be wiped out at some point in the future, and you know we need to work towards a trans free society, that would be okay on your campus as long as they're not calling for violence against a specific trans individual. No, there's no. They have they have zero concept of consistency. It's wild stuff. Um, all right, so let's. Uh, Let's take a couple super chats, and then we have to find out if these other Forbes clip are all screwed up. If so, Forbes, you suck. If it's just that one clip, if it's just that one clip, I'll let Forbes slide. But if they screwed it all up, then we're going to have to destroy these guys. All right, Swiss it's Apologetics. Hate I was praying in the streets of San Francisco, and now I have a Zapupa. <laughs> <laughs> You realize how messed up that is? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, the mark the mark on the foreheads of like uh, very devout Muslims, that's called a Zabiba. Oh, and so Swiss Apologetics is saying uh, San Francisco is becoming uh, popular for uh, because people could just defecate all over the streets. So if you're you're praying in the streets of San Francisco, you'd get a different kind of mark on your forehead. Anyway, wait, San Francisco is becoming like India. Why are you talking about India, man? What's wrong with you? Uh, no, they've and, and by the way, I mean San Diego is still much nicer, but similar stuff in San Diego where now they don't arrest people for. I mean, you're just walking down the street and people are shooting up and uh, smoking crack and everything else, and they don't do anything. And then, uh, yeah, and then people are stoned, and you've got your little hair salon. There's a guy out masturbating right in front of your place. And police won't won't do anything about any of it, so it's becoming a, a dystopia. That's nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a good place to live. Yeah. Uh, if the I wonder what they think about Israel. Uh, if the trajectory continues as it is, if the trajectory continues as it is, I will be the real man. <laughs> That's a job's uh, stomach. If the trajectory yeah. continues as it is, if the trajectory one, continues as it is. 
A hundred to one. I'm if the, real the man. trajectory continues as it is, if the trajectory continues as it is, <laughs> what a clown! Yep. Uh, uh, Messianic apostate says, "Did you see my thread on Palestinians admitting Hamas deliberately puts them in harm's way by using them as human shields?" You familiar with this? What did you see my thread on Palestinians admitting Hamas deliberately puts them in harm's way? Uh, I I briefly just. Gla- glossed over it didn't really so look at palestinians it. admitting that this is what hamas does in which case it wouldn't just be a an israeli accusation from people that yeah we, we also have um we, we have their hamas leaders for years now saying that um that it is part of their that they are that they are proud of it just like Adawa, that they are proud of uh, proud of that Thank you. Uh, <laughs> that they are pr- proud of sacrificing their own population because they are a nation of martyrs. Um, we have them explicitly calling for people to not evacuate, to stay where they are, not to listen to the Israeli state, which which co- directly causes what is happening. Um, plus. Yeah, we, we have we have people from within, uh, Mossam Hassan Yusuf, for example, who who says this is this is a Hamas tactic to attack, then to get back, and then to have a bunch of civilians die and to complain about it. When you, you and I, we just recently uh, a few days ago, we reviewed the the, the civilian to combatant uh, ratios in past conflicts, and in the two thousand fourteen Gaza war, for example, it was not a bad one not a very unusual one it, it looks so it seems like uh israel is not killing excessive amounts of civilians they are doing a very good job in trying to avoid civilian casualties yeah can you imagine but, what how much that would suck if you've got people who actually deliberately hide among civilians to maximize well, we've said this a bunch of times but that's like a nightmare situation for a soldier hey i have to go kill that terrorist and my job is to minimize civilian casualties while achieving my objective but the terrorist's job is to maximize civilian casualties while trying to kill me that's yeah. nuts man that is a nightmare situation uh, but but people actually believe that israel is actually trying to uh, trying to kill lots of civilians here which uh, they could do that very easily they're either doing a very horrible job at that or they're just not really doing it <laughs> yeah yeah i, I mean they could they could justify five to one or ten to one and just say, look, these guys are hiding behind civilians. That's why we're killing so many civilians. And yet they are taking massive precautions to avoid killing civilians. During the uh, Russian Chechen wars, the two of them, uh, the civilian to combatant uh, fatality ratio was like um, 76 to 10 or something like that. So uh, seven to one and higher. Which means seven civilians for each combatant uh, killed. It's it, it's a it's a very high number. There are conflicts with with such high numbers happening all around the world all the time, and it's forgotten. And for and yeah, that's it. Uh, knows too much says check out news reports by Carolyn Glick. I can't. Whenever I hear that name, I can't help but think of uh, that uh, Martin Short character, Glick, way back in the day, where he played a talk show host or something like that. Oh, wait a minute. What did she report? She what? posted something about... Who? Uh, Glick? Glick. Uh, Christoph Keating says, I thought from the river to the sea was terrible, but now I have a pen pal. <laughs> Man. Now I have a pen pal. I know it's a reference to PPM Classic River of Jordan. We are all one people. We are all one. Get a pen pal. Get a pen pal, eh? <laughs> hey, you need to make you need to make a uh, profit tales where you've got Jordan Peterson, but you're playing Jordan Peterson and Ali Dawa's in there and I'm playing Ali Dawa. We got it. We got to get our awesome impressions into something. Yeah. Yes, we do. We do. Here are some sh- here, here are some shekels for you lovely Gentiles. Thank you. We take all the shekels. We love the shekels. And we thank everyone who's uh, sending us all the shekels. And especially people who are not making it obvious, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I Always don't know why... make, sh- make sure to hide it very nicely, uh, not make it obvious. Yeah. 
I don't know why everyone's so pressed about Hamas taking captives back to Gaza. They were listening to JP and wanted some pen pals. <laughs> <laughs> they actually also took dead bodies to, uh, with them, you know. Um, they took a bunch of dead bodies. So people whom they, uh, people that they executed inside Israel, they took their bodies with them back to to Gaza to, I guess, to display them and to put emotional pressure by keeping, um, you know, people's loved ones whose dead bodies they have with them and, and pre preventing them from, you know, having them in, in mourning properly. Israel had to actually return dead bodies from, from Gaza. <laughs> we have uh, Uthman's tomato ketchup, al salami, I like them. Al salami, I like them. Can you wish my grandma a happy 12th birthday? <laughs> <laughs> so messed up uh so question for you were you able to contact the she was nine years old person i still haven't uh looked into that at the moment i, I shall do that today tomorrow i'll do that. yeah quit okay. goofing off yeah okay we need that guy we i know help. we do uh christoph says if someone with low melanin used the word beginning with the letter n they wouldn't worry about specific individuals rules before throwing them out yeah and that's the thing see if if a university if a university basically announced as a policy that they are going to be maximum free expression on that campus and they announce that and students who go there understand it's a free for all you're on your own no one's stepping in it's just like the rest of the united states and you say what you want if you don't like it then avoid then avoid that person who's saying it if a if a university actually wanted to do that i would say okay okay you're announcing that that's your policy people who go there understand it's a free for all. People are going to be saying all sorts of messed up things. And if it's legal, they're going to allow it. I would understand that. But yeah, it's these these universities that like crush anyone who says the wrong thing. They set out to destroy that person's life for saying the wrong thing. But anyone who's calling for genocide against Jews gets a free pass. There's something not there's something wrong going on there. Yeah. Hey, Ridvan, do the far four dance. <laughs> We got to get the, you got to, <laughs> that's the far, that's the far four, uh, grandpa, my human grandpa is dying. Oh no, look what the Jews did to my grandpa, my grandpa is dying. I don't know, I don't, I mean, has it been pointed out? Look, if the dude's grandpa was a human, but he's a mouse, then that means that uh, these jihadis got turned into mice by Allah at some point. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Or his grandfather boned a mouse. And had some weird mutant. I guess why that's why Far Four can talk, even though he's a mouse. All right, a couple more before we do our experiment and see if his other video clips are working. Muslims treated in the West like some oppressed minority when there is two billion. This isn't. This is another issue. Muslims in the West are treated like some oppressed minority when there are two billion of them, and they're the oppressors of so many real minorities. Yeah, you go to Pakistan, who's the oppressors? You go to Egypt, who are the oppressors? You go to Iran, who are the oppressors? Suddenly, suddenly, when someone moves over here, uh, they're the oppressed minority, even though everyone bends over backwards to protect them from criticism, protect their profit. Are these pro-jihad protesters paid astroturf? Wait, are these pro-jihad protesters paid? What does that mean? Paid what is astroturf? I don't know what that um, means. Uh, please give your opinions on the stance by the Wokies that say, I am not anti-Semitic, but I am anti-Zionist. Do they have a point or are they wrong? You can, you can, you can have a position where you don't just hate Jews and you object to something um, that Israel does. You can hold that position. That's not really the position because notice you can say ah, i'm just against i'm just against this atrocity that israel's committing okay if that's the only atrocity in the world that you ever focus on and there are way bigger way worse atrocities going on then it doesn't look like your your problem is really with israel it just looks like you 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 have a different view of jews that's what it looks like so i would say the people in general, most of the people who say, I'm not anti-Semitic, I'm just anti-Zionist, they're actually anti-Semitic, but they want to justify uh, their anti-Semitism. 
So they just plus, no, I'm just against Zionism. Yeah. Plus, people like to uh, like to somehow uh, make it look like Zionism is something something different. It's like some some uh, extremist, uh, violent, hateful attitude that uh, they can point at and separate from. Uh, from Jewishness or Jewish existence, and then they're like, no, 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 no not anti-Jewish, anti-Zionist. First of all, lots of people who say this are very quick to say something incredibly anti-Jewish as soon as you <laughs> start arguing and press them. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the other thing is, what, what, does, what, is, what does Zionism actually stand for? And what exactly do they uh, hate about, about Zionism? They, it, they make it look like what they hate is... Um, is this this oppression this racism or something but um zionism is basically the jewish right to have their state which they obtained uh when people say this stuff what they're basically saying is well i'm i'm not against i'm not against jews i'm just against them having you know the the, the jewish land they should just they should not have it they should go live somewhere else they should become subjects again it's, it's it's just bizarre and also um and notice it, it, going along the lines of people who say they're uh, just anti-zionist notice you're you're basically saying the jews are the only people in the world who aren't allowed to have their own spot at all period yeah. never under any circumstances they're not allowed to have or, or you'll say well they can have a land but just not here just somewhere else okay yeah so you want them to steal someone else's land okay got it Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, notice you can't say where. Yeah, where, where are they going to get? Where are they just going to get land? Are they going to go buy some? Because they were buying, they were buying land in what is now Israel. They were doing that before, before the establishment of the nation. They were buying yes. land there. There were some that had always been there. There are some who came and bought land there, and all of that is condemned. All of that is condemned. Yes. They're not allowed to have any of that. Even if they, even if a Jew went and bought. And by the way, if you're saying, oh, but that they, you know, they bought this land or something like that, they're not allowed to have that. They are also kicked out of a number of Muslim countries. They had land there. They're kicked out. They had to go. And they're kicked out of a lot more land than they got when, with the nation of Israel. And so, uh, yeah, notice it's it's just Jews aren't allowed to have their own land. Okay, if you're saying Jews aren't allowed to have any spot where they can actually defend themselves against the jihadis who want to slaughter them, I'd say your problem is with Jews and not just with Zionists. And if they did anything else, you'd be complaining about what they were doing somewhere else. Yes, yes. Uh, also, the vast majority of Jews are Zionists, um, so you can't just you can't. Uh, and and also, um, again, also, uh, just what you brought up, buying land. That was the major, the, the 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 majority of how the Jews or how the Zionists acquired land in the in the region uh, up until the founding of of Israel. The majority was by buying the land. And uh, then also by being given land, which was uh, not owned by anyone else or which was not occupied by anyone else, which was um, under British control, it was given to them because it was a project to establish a Jewish homeland. But um, the buying was considered offensive and was considered uh, stealing the homes because how dare you come there and how dare you spend your wealth and uh, actually acquire land to live there. The, the that's what they refer to as stealing because the Jews didn't, uh, you know, forcibly take anyone's land away. At least not until uh, the Arab Civil War started in 1947, and not until uh, after 1948 the Arabs declared war in Israel. As a result of which Israel did uh, take the homes of those who left, and also expelled others and left and let others remain. But this was all uh, after a war that was declared against them. The Jews did not come and just steal land. They bought land. So what, what they're basically saying when they accuse them of stealing for that is if I, um, if I move somewhere and I have, uh, I, I have money, I have wealth, and I, decided to, I decide, decide to buy a bunch of land or buy a certain house, the people who lived there before could come and say, you, you're stealing, you're stealing my house, you're stealing my land. I live there. You don't deserve to do this. You don't get to just buy this and live there. Yeah, okay, great. Let's just do the same. Let's just apply the same standards nowadays to real estate and let's go and kill everyone who buys uh, the place that we want to live. You can't apply the rule to anyone else, AP. <laughs> the rules only apply to Jews. Have you, have you learned nothing yet? <laughs> There's a completely different set of rules for Jews that don't apply to anyone else. Period. Get your well, get your mind around that.
Live with That's it. how Jews are special. Jews are special. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> I'm just I'm just thinking of what what, what some of the like uh, some of the jihadis on campus and stuff respond. The Jews, you think you're chosen? You are chosen for destruction. <laughs> He's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are nuts, man. Terrible, uh, terrible, terrible stuff. Uh, let's see, D Wood and AP, your favorite. What? What is this? What is this mess? What kind of people are you sending over here, AP? D Wood and AP, your favorite: pancakes or waffles or French toast or crepes. Eggs scrambled or fried or boiled or poached, toast, sourdough, or multigrain. I like this is uh, English. I don't understand. Yeah, I'd say I like pancakes, waffles, and French toast pretty much equally. Pancakes are the easiest to make, so I'll go with that. Uh, I'd probably go with scrambled eggs. Easiest to make. I don't um, eat uh, traditional food, so I can't. I can't uh, necessarily comment on that. I always. Uh, get my own food by um, different means that some people might consider controversial, which is why I don't want to share it with the public, uh, which involves going out and, you know, finding random people at night, for example, when mm -hmm. others are sleeping and then yeah. acquiring food, acquiring food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan here. This is from earlier. Yes. So this is a refutation of UAP. Only getting mm -hmm. uh, a, vi a video through. Only getting video through one side? That's weird. <laughs> I understand the audio. I don't know how you're getting video through one side, Jonathan. Uh, let's see. Uh, genocide equals free speech. Wrong pronoun equals hate speech. Yes, that is the that is the issue. Of course. There, are, there, there are like a million different things you would be in trouble for, for saying on college campuses. That's the That's the big takeaway here. Presidents of the university saying, uh, if you're talking about genocide, calling for genocide only if you actually start doing it. That's when it becomes a, a problem. All right, there's still some more super chats, but I do want to uh I do want to test this audio here of another clip to see if any of these other ones have a problem. If so, if this is a problem, then we are going to divert this discussion. That's how I'm going to do it. So all Thanks. right, here we go. Drum roll, drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. Um, let's see. Dr. Jerome. Gay, a Harvard student calling for hey, the mass murder of African Americans is not protected free speech at I already came up with my plan. I already came up with my plan B for this because uh, someone, matter of fact, let me go ahead and uh, zoom down to whoever brought it up. Someone was pointing out there's a Wall Street Journal article, and I just looked it up. There's a Wall Street Journal article of them. Uh, reporters asking students to explain from the river to the sea what it what does it mean and, and apparently people having absolutely no clue so i was like okay if, if the audio clips i mean if the videos aren't working then we'll just uh we'll go through that article but it looks Wait, like the there, there, there is that's that's nice that's that sounds entertaining yeah yeah no i was i was like oh we could totally we could totally just go through that article and stuff but yeah we might want to check that out for uh for uh future discussion all right so this woman was just brutal and she's brutal in she was brutal with all of them there are tons of good clips guys i encourage everyone to uh to look at some of the footage again it was like five and a half hours of uh of this uh this congressional hearing and so there's tons of clips and lots of some congressmen they speak and i'm like who is this idiot sounds like an idiot and others i think whoa this person is really really smart and then uh this chick here she's just kind of brutal going after them but let me back this up a little bit and let's hear what she's got to say. Speech at Harvard, correct? Oh, wait, let me back this up. What did she say? Dr. Gay, a Harvard student calling for the mass murder of African-Americans is not protected free speech at Harvard, correct? Our commitment to it's free speech. It's a yes speech. or no question. Is that corrected? Is that okay for students to call for the mass murder of African-Americans at Harvard? Is that protected free speech? Our commitment to free speech. It's a yes extends. or no question. <laughs> Let me ask you this. You are president of Harvard, so I assume you're familiar with the term intifada, correct? And by the way, notice, I mean, notice what she does right here. She wants to say, hey, like their position, which they're calling out is we want to maximize freedom of expression. So as long as you're not actually, you know, engaging in it, then we have to let it slide. And so she leads off with. Uh, you know, what if what if the situation were a little different and, you know, this other group was being, you know, called to, you know, for extermination or for killing or something like, well, what would the situation be there? And the, the 
the president won't even answer because the president knows, oops, if I say that, then I'm screwed on this other issue, right? I'll be, I'll, my, my uh -huh. hypocrisy will be exposed. So she can't even say, no, you can't call for uh, the extermination of black people. Who is this congresswoman again? Uh, I forget her name. Kelslick, something like that. Um, she was, it. she handled this like a. Like a like boss. A, like a boss. Like a boss. Like a boss with boss. Elise, Elise Stefanik or Stefanik or something like that. Stefanik. Okay. Elise Stefanik. Stefanik. Like Gwen Stefani, but with a K at the end. <laughs> okay. I've heard that oh. term, yes. And you understand that the use of the term intifada in the context of the Israeli-Arab conflict is indeed a call for violent armed resistance against the state of Israel, including violence against civilians and the genocide of Jews. Are you aware of that? By the way, that uh, um, if, if people don't understand the relevance here, the calls on college campuses are to globalize the intifada, right? To globalize the armed resistance against Israel and Jews. But notice what that means. If you're saying globalize it, that so do it over here too. What are you talking about? You're not dealing with Israel over here. What are you talking about? What could you possibly mean by globalizing this resistance against Israel? You mean attacking Jews or at least making them really, really uncomfortable. That's what you mean. So that's what she's pointing out, that uh, you have these calls on college campuses and the, the campuses are doing nothing about it. This is, this is some of the speech that campuses are saying, hey, they've got freedom of expression. Of course, they can call for globalizing intifada, which means going after Jews, targeting Jews globally, not just in Israel. Um, that by the way, uh, her father is Czech and her mother is of Italian ancestry. That's why she has such a weird name. I just checked. I just checked. No pun intended. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, this is yeah. why I bring you on to look up people's parentage. Yes. <laughs> AP is obsessed. He's like, well, she got that weird name. Is she Turkish? If so, I hate her. This, no, this is what I do with this. this is what I do all the time. When I when I'm when I hear something, I'm immediately curious to find out, okay, well, what's the deal? What's up with that? So that's what I do all my life. Type of hateful speech is personally abhorrent to me. And this uh this president of Harvard, she keeps saying. It's personally abhorrent to me, but she won't say, no, it's not allowed. She'll say, it's personally abhorrent to me. Check this out. Hateful speech is personally abhorrent to me. And there have been multiple marches at Harvard with students chanting, quote, there is only one solution, Intifada revolution, mm. and quote, globalize the Intifada. Globalize. Is that correct? I've heard that thoughtless, reckless, and hateful language on our campus, yes. So based upon your testimony, you understand that this call for intifada is to commit genocide against the Jewish people in Israel and globally, correct? Uh-huh, uh -huh. that's what it is. I will say again, that type of hateful speech is personally abhorrent to me. <laughs> You're not, <laughs> this, is, this is my concern. It reminds me of the Dawa guys who will say some words and people will think they're actually responding when they're just being they're just being slimy and deceptive she's being asked is this against your policy would you actually punish students for calling for genocide against jews or for calling for armed resist against arms resistance and armed fighting against jews globally would you punish a student for well you know personally i don't like it personally we're not asking about your freaking feelings lady we're not yeah. asking nobody, what your nobody feelings cares are. about your personal opinion here but she keeps coming back you know i personally would find that a a bit on the distasteful side. So I hope that answers your question. It doesn't answer the question at all. I also <laughs> like vanilla ice cream, by the way. <laughs> yeah. all right, let's see. Do you believe that type of hateful speech is contrary to Harvard's code of conduct or is it allowed at Harvard? Mm. It is at odds with the values of Harvard. <laughs> Did you hear that? It's at odds with the value. Is it against the code of conduct? In other words, are you in trouble? <laughs> it's against our values and my feelings. This is just, my goodness. Like she walked in prepared. I'll be prepared to say things that will sound good to people who are listening. Oh yeah, she she's celebrating freedom of expression. She, my goodness, all right. She said she finds calls for genocide distasteful and abhorrent. You see, okay, that she's on the right page. 
Not what's being asked and not what everyone's concern is. We're not at, yeah, no one, no one cares if the president of the university sees people calling for genocide and says, yeah, I'm not a big fan, but they can do what they want. The issue is, well, are, are they allowed to do that? Wouldn't this be considered double speak? what she's doing here? Yeah. Which is um, like she's being she's giving responses that are deliberately uh deliberately unclear and vague and can be re reinterpreted in any way to evade the actual, you know, point here. That's the, Yeah, and if you're looking at I mean, okay, you're the president of Harvard, you you obviously are intelligent. You um you know what they're about to ask you, you know what you're being brought in for. And the fact that these are your these are the responses that you've decided to give. Hey, is this in alignment with the code of conduct of the university? Well, you know, our values are uh, and my feeling, my personal feelings. Wow, this is wild stuff. All right. Can you but not say here that it is also... against the code of conduct at Harvard? We embrace a commitment to free expression, <laughs> even <laughs> of views that are objectionable, offensive, hateful. Calling for genocide. <laughs> we embrace freedom of expression with calls for genocide against Jews. It's when that speech crosses into conduct that violates our policies against bullying, harassment. Does that speech not? Did, did you catch that? It's when it, it, when it crosses the line into conduct and, uh, and action. If you're actually what in the world does that even mean? Does that mean so? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. We, we we allow free expression, including including um, you know calls for actual genocide, until the genocide is actually committed. You know, after it's done, after it's all said and done, and uh, and, and and the massacre happens, then of course, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we will oppose it. We will never allow it. <laughs> yeah, and that's um, man. Yeah, if you. And, and we'll 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 see this as we go through some of these clips, but that is the actual position of at least a, a, a couple of these presidents of universities. It wouldn't actually have to be genocide, but you have to actually be doing something like against a specific individual, like hurting a specific Jewish student or something like that. Where that's when you're crossing the line. That's when you're crossing the line over into your conduct. As long as you're just saying. Hey, we need to we need to wipe out Jews and wipe out Israel and and have armed resistance globally against Jews. As long as you're just saying it, but you're not actually doing it, you're good to go. Because we respect freedom of expression, unless it was any other issue besides Jews, and then we we would stop it. Yeah, then we yeah yeah yeah. That violates our policies against bullying, harassment. Does that speech and not cross that barrier? Does that speech not call for the genocide of Jews and the elimination of Israel? When you testify that you understand that is the def definition of intifada. Is that speech, speech according to the code of conduct or not? We embrace a commitment to free expression and give My a wide berth goodness. to free expression, wow, even of views that are objectionable. This is you this is, and you, you I. Know, I uh, you have uh, people. People always say about politicians that they would give these. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I guess she's technically. This woman a is a politician. Uh, if she yeah. loses her job at Harvard because of uh, all the donors, all the Jewish donors, she's going to lose over this stuff. If she loses her job, my goodness, lady, get a get run for Congress. You'd be a you you do a bang up job. <laughs> I mean, I mean, guys, think about this because you know, a, a American. When an American hears, you know. I, I, I'm devoted to freedom of expression. We think, oh, great. Listen, but what she's answering is, hey, I asked you whether calling for genocide against Jews is against the code of conduct. You said, oh, well, my, per you know, I find it personally abhorrent and it goes against our values. But OK, does it go against the code of conduct? Does it go? Wow. Against does it? And she's our like, values. What? yeah, she goes, once it crosses the line into conduct and the lady says, uh, Wait, do, do, do the calls for genocide cross the line that you're talking about? Well, we believe in giving freedom of expression the widest possible birth. <laughs> That's what she's answering. When she says freedom of expression, she means freedom of expression to call for genocide until your words actually cross over into action where you're actually doing it.
This is nuts, man. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but I just can't imagine. Like, if the same situation took place um, today, and if the victims or those targeted were um, were were Muslims, if they were Arabs, if they were even even um, I don't know, even, even black people or mm -hmm. you know, other people, this this would uh, it would never even even get to this, mm -hmm. and they would never sit there and just be like, yeah, you, would, so you would not need you wouldn't need a it. you wouldn't need a congressional hearing about yeah, that, yeah. right? But it's just like um, when it comes to Jews nowadays, it's uh, while always talking about how the Jews were victimized, they, they, they are just treating Jews like they're treating the average white person, basically. And, uh, you know, you can you can say whatever you want about white people. You can say whatever you want about Christians and or you can Turkish, also say whatever you want about. Well, yeah. <laughs> or you can say you can also say whatever you want about Jews now because they are basically also white, you know, so it doesn't matter if you call for their genocide, you know. It only matters in movies, you yeah. know, but it doesn't matter in real life. This is nuts. No, that's Defensive. not the case. You were aware that Harvard ranked dead last when it came to free speech. Are you not aware of that report? <laughs> As I observed earlier, I reject that characterization. It's the data shows it's true. <laughs> they, had all these they had all these criteria listing and Harvard ranks dead last. In freedom of expression on campus, and so all of a sudden, hey, if we're if we're calling for genocide against Jews, uh, uh, is that allowed? Well, we have such a high view of freedom of expression here in our university that is ranked dead last among universities. My goodness. All right. And isn't it true that Harvard previously rescinded multiple offers of admissions for applicants and accepted freshmen for sharing offensive memes, uh, racist statements, sometimes as young as 16 years old? Did Harvard not rescind those offers of admission? So so basically people are accepted to Harvard and then they find a tweet or a meme that was shared by a student when he was a teenager and they say, hey, we're taking there. We're, you can't come here anymore. But... <laughs> So you can't you can't share an you know a, an offensive meme when you're a teenager. You're not allowed to go to Harvard, but uh, you you can go to Harvard and be calling for Jews to be exterminated. <laughs> and then what's crazy is like you wonder do, do the pre, does the presidents of these universities actually not get it, or do they get it? Do, are they actually thinking yeah it's okay against Jews, but not against anyone else, or do, do they actually view themselves as champions of freedom of expression? And they're just the biggest hypocrites in the world. I don't know. They, they probably have a have a like a like an emergency meeting at the university. Like uh, we recently we recently admitted uh, this individual to our university, but we have just found out that uh, about six years ago he made a post in which he shared a cartoon which makes a joke about homosexuality. Yeah. What shall we do? Hey, oh, no. we saw this oh, no. guy. We saw this oh, no. guy five years ago. Five years ago, he posted something and said, Donald Trump has a point. Donald Trump has a point. Can't allow no. this person. But then when it's like, by the way, somebody also said, uh, Jews don't deserve to live. We don't care about that. <laughs> we have Jews? more serious things to deal with. Matter of fact, that should be the kind, that should be the kind of, uh, that should be a kind of skit. You have like a little boardroom. With uh, all these uh, all these geniuses there, and they're deciding who gets to go and who doesn't, and then someone's like, they see the student, they see the beginning of what the student wrote. I call for the extermination of <gasps> who? We have to we have to hear who you're talking about first, because if you know, if you say black people or trans people or something like that, then then you're in trouble. But if you say Jews, you're good to go. You're welcome to Harvard. Oh, Jews. Okay. Hey, I'm about I'm about to record a, a a skit. I'm about to record a skit with my son. Uh, <laughs> I got him a Harvard shirt, and then L uh, L from uh, uh, channel L I S O Elohim. Uh, yeah, she put death to Jews on the back of the Harvard shirt. But it's going to be my kid is going off to Harvard, and uh, <laughs> he's about to leave. He's about to leave, and he's uh, and I'm like I'm going to be like. Just want you to know, me and your mother are so proud of you. And he's like, well, I couldn't have done it without you guys. I'll be like, uh, so we'll, we'll go back and forth about all the hard work in getting to Harvard. <laughs> and as he's about to walk out the door, I'm going to say, oh, don't forget this. I'm going to toss it to him and he's going to go, oh, my own Hamas flag. I'm gonna wave it with pride, <laughs> son. He's going to turn and then it's, it shows the back of his Harvard shirt. It says death to Israel. <laughs>
that's 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 gold. That's, that's going to be funny. That's going to be funny. In fact, Solid. I shouldn't let I shouldn't let the joke out of the bag. But you all you all watch our live stream, so you get the joke first. Solid. All right. Solid, solid. That long predates my time as president. But you so understand that Harvard made that decision to rescind those offers of admission. I have no reason to contradict the facts as you present them. Correct, here. because it's a fact. You're also aware that a Winthrop House faculty dean was let go over, he, over who he chose to legally represent, correct? That was while you were dean. That is an incorrect characterization of what transpired. What's the characterization? I'm not going to get into details about a personnel matter. Well, let me ask you this. Will admissions offers be... I'd have broken bad. I'd be like, this is... Uh, we're Congress. You'll do whatever the heck we say right now. Give me the info. Give me the info right now. I want to... Or I'll, I'll, I'll throw you... I, I will hold you in contempt. <laughs> contempt of Congress. I wonder if that's a thing. I want to move to New York just to vote for this woman here. Oh, she's New York? Yeah, apparently. Interesting. Did, or any disciplinary action be taken against students or applicants who say from the river to the sea or intifada advocating for the murder of Jews? As I've said, that type of hateful, reckless, offensive speech is personally abhorrent to me. She just did it. Today that when no action will be taken. Did you hear it? She just did it. She's done it like 10 times. Personally abhorrent to me. What action will be taken? I mean, my goodness, let me let me let me back it up a little. She specifically asked, would any action be taken against a student who is calling for genocide against Jews? Would there be any repercussions for that student? Her response is, I find it personally abhorrent. You know what this reminds me of? Um, this is probably this is very insulting. I don't know to who, but um, when I had the, when I had a discussion with Mohammed Tajab. And I kept asking him about uh, about the apostasy laws and uh, the killing of apostates. He kept responding to me with, uh, "Well, my, my personal opinion, my in my personal view, yeah. in my personal opinion, what I actually recommend, what I say, which my I'm my not, I'm not my feelings on this matter, you. my feelings yeah. on this matter." <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what the religion says. Uh, yeah, what, what I actually recommend, I don't care what you recommend. But this is basically the same thing here. It, it, it's it's quite telling that uh, these people compare to each other in their responses. This is amazing. <laughs> As I've said, that type of hateful, reckless, offensive speech is personally abhorrent to me. I'm today that when no action will be taken. What action will be taken? When speech crosses into conduct that violates our policies, Look, she's actually including policies she against it. bullying, harassment, when or intimidation, over. we take action and we have robust disciplinary processes that allow us to hold individuals accountable. What action has been taken against students who are harassing and calling for the genocide of Jews on Harvard's campus? I can assure you, we have robust. <laughs> what actions have been taken? Please. I'm not oh, asking. Actions underway. I, I'm asking what. This whole thing should be called how to how to answer without answering. Actions have been yeah. taken against given, those students. Given students' rights to privacy, and our obligations under FERPA, I will not say more about any specific cases, other than to reiterate that processes are ongoing. Pretty, sh pretty sure she doesn't have to name people, right? She just has to say. Yeah, you could say, that yeah, there were three students who were calling for genocide and we kicked them out of the university or we made them attend some uh, some counseling or something like that or some training. We, we did something. Or, or we gave but them no. awards. Yeah, her, her, her basically her saying, oh, I can't, you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to give specifics. That's her way of saying, no, we don't do anything, period. Yeah. You know what the number one hate crime in America is? I know that over the last couple of months, there has been an alarming rise of anti-Semitism, which I question. understand is the, the critical topic that we are here to discuss. That's, that's correct. Not the question. It is anti-Jewish. That's, that's not even the crimes. question. It's not and even the question. Harvard that's, ranks yeah, that's, that's the, the lowest when it that's comes to protecting Jewish students. This is why I've called for your resignation and your testimony today, not being able to answer with moral clarity, speaks volumes. I yield back. 
Yeah, uh, I mean, think about that. Jews if, are the number one uh, yeah. target in hate crimes. Yeah, and so uh, I mean, think about the think about the point she's making here. Hey, Jews are already before you you say there's there's this recent right there's this recent increase in anti semitism on campuses. Even before that, Jews are the biggest targets, and so Jews are the biggest targets already. And you guys are letting it happen. You guys are letting it escalate and get even worse on your campus. And you're acknowledging you won't do anything about it unless someone actually starts committing genocide. Then then you got a problem with it. So, so notice, notice the point. It's Jews are already being attacked. Jews are already being attacked in different places, and it's being encouraged at your university. And you're saying, well, as long as the student who's calling for genocide isn't actually doing it, then there's no problem, even though other people are actually are actually you know targeting Jews. This is amazing. But, this is wild stuff. But you're being unfair because she personally doesn't like it. Yep, she sure doesn't. <laughs> this is ridiculous, man. So anyway, that is the president of Harvard University being brought before Congress, being brought before Congress to explain how Harvard University is dealing with all of these complaints by Jewish students about how they're being uh, harassed and um, and uh, how people are calling for their annihilation and how they're being told that Jews deserve to be massacred like they were on October 7th. And so uh, Harvard, MIT, Penn, they do nothing about this. And so it actually comes before Congress for them to clarify why they're not doing anything. And the response is, well, you know, as long as no one's actually genociding these Jews, who are we to complain? We, we respect freedom of expression in this case only. This is wild stuff, man. All right. Just so, find a find a pen pal who goes to pen. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, you know, when she asked, <laughs> this would have completely well not redeemed her morally, but it would have been it would have been hilarious to me if that if the president of Harvard had responded. So, uh, the congresswoman asked her, um, "Do you know what the what the biggest hate crime in America is right now?" It would have been funny if she said, "Yeah, it's right now," with you asking me all these questions. <laughs> that have been I, I, I would have died laughing and like all would have been well not all would have been forgiven but I, I she'd have got some some awesome cool points for saying something like that all right so we'll go through a couple super chats real quick and then we will check out it's much shorter it, her interaction with uh with the president of Penn is much shorter but uh it's pretty much the same thing you get the exact same thing from a bunch of presidents of a bunch of universities all saying, hey, if it's calls for genocide against Jews, freedom of expression, man, freedom of expression. Uh, oh, knows too much said majority of Jerusalem population, even in the mid 1800s before Zionism were Jews. In 1948, Jews were cleansed from the old city synagogues destroyed. Is that true, AP? Wait, 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 what, what, what was the question? Majority of Jews in population even in the mid, uh, whereas before Zionism were Jews in 1948, Jews were cleansed from the old city, synagogues destroyed. Um, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, okay, Jerusalem population was, was, was uh, quite different. I would have to check the history of it to comment on it. I personally don't exactly remember. Well, then you're useless. Uh, yep. John... Hey, check this out. John AP and D Wood fan. Who is the John here? What, oh, John. John, John, John who? Oh, John. Yeah, John. Uh, no, I'm saying, is, who... is this a guy named John who is an AP and D, D Wood fan? Or is he saying he is a John, comma, AP, comma, D Wood fan? He's a fan of John, the one who is currently here streaming with us. Uh, I love you, David. I uh, love you, David. Glad someone who's watching this does. Uh, I love you, David and Ridvan. Seeing people refuse to acknowledge anti-Semitism is painful. Thank you both for being on the side of humanity and truth. Yeah, uh, it sucks not acknowledging the anti-Semitism, but like the people who are actually defending it and and the posi their positions of power. That's crazy. Yeah. I I have no idea how every single Jew who donates to you to these universities doesn't 
doesn't contact. I mean, I know a bunch have already, but I don't know how anyone could possibly be Jewish and still supporting these universities. Matter of fact, that would be a that would be a that would be absolutely brilliant. All the uh, Jewish donors to these universities just take a poll of various universities. Say, how do you how does your university respond to calls for genocide against Jews? And just put your money in the universities that that aren't <laughs> that aren't doing what Harvard is doing, right? The, the ones who are actually doing something to discourage students from uh, saying that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, Harvard University's OG motto, Veritas Christo et Ecclesiae, which translated from Latin means truth for Christ and the church. Yep. Lots of these universities founded for Christian purposes, not dumb atheist purposes, but atheism is, atheism is parasitic. It sucks the lifeblood out of everything that everyone else came up with. Hey, hold hold up before you before you continue with with that speech there, just make sure you don't you it doesn't stop this. cross over to conduct. Okay, there's no uh, conduct. I'm just stating a fact. <laughs> Christianity is like this powerful megalodon going through the ocean, and atheism is like a lamprey sucking the blood out of our sides. Okay, and 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 the and atheism sits back sucking the blood out of the megalodon going oh look how fast we're moving through the water thanks to atheism no you're sucking the blood out of a megalodon nice anyway that sounds very weird but yeah <laughs> yes uh let's see knows too much says hypocrite leftists who claim to be against imperialism doesn't seem to ever have a problem with arab uh, arabic islamic imperialism yeah no they're there's no coherence to the positions. It's uh, and it's not. It doesn't even stem from like these students having some particular ideology. They're they're just programmed. Here's what. Here's the thing. Here are the things you are supposed to be outraged about. Here are the things that you keep your mouth shut about permanently. If you don't, then if you if you do the wrong thing, if you do something that we we don't tell you to do, then you're expelled from our group, and we'll attack you too. Uh, Raymond Piper, close the universities. Yeah, that would help. D. Wood. Close all universities. Oh, here we go. D. Wood, boldly blames Forbes when something goes wrong. Christian, AP, apologizes for his mistakes like a weakling. Atheist, <laughs> draw, draw your own conclusion. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good uh, point. Jack says, I'll make the shekels obvious. Thank you. We like, we, you know, it's good to have all sorts of shekels coming in in various directions. Um, so, yeah, yeah. A lot of people drama. I don't know why that cracked me. Drama, it up. drama llama. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but the P and AP stands for powerful stuff. Yeah, it is. It's true. It's true. John West says Islam porn titled Ninth Birthday Consummation Party. That would be something that they watch in Pakistan. <laughs> But again, if you're going with Daniel Hikikachu, that's someone's uh, grandmother. Because remember, you can, uh, as long as you get parental consent, you can have sex with an 11-month-old baby. Can you imagine, like, <laughs> like the Jews aren't even allowed to respond to terrorists. The Jews aren't even allowed to have their own place, but you've got you've got like the champions of Dawa running around calling for the massacre of apostates, uh, calling for uh, uh, thinking it's OK to have sex with five year olds, four year olds and so on. And these guys, they get a free pass on everything. This is wild yeah. stuff, man. Yeah. Well, what are you going to do? We have to fight you and forcibly convert you. And then what are we going to do with your little daughter? Just let them die there? No. Well Oh, hey, this is actually good. Marissa here says, you know that Allstate commercial, it's not going to fit. Uh, when I see it, a pic, when I see it, I picture Michael Scott. So that's from the office saying, that's what Aisha said. We might need to start saying that instead of that's what she said, start saying that's what Aisha said. <laughs> that's got to yeah. be, that's got to be a new thing. We need to make that a, yeah. an ongoing joke. Guys, I we're developing our own lingo and terminology in this community, you know, leather straps and all that stuff. But yeah, we need to work in. That's what Aisha said as an ongoing uh, joke. Uh, so we got, my name is Sean. 
Apologetics Roadshow's featured channels, none. Oh, here we go. Apologetics Roadshow's featured channels, none. Christian. Apostate Prophets featured channels, Fareed responds, atheist. <laughs> Draw your own conclusion. That's true. I have Fareed response on my featured channels list. <laughs> That's funny because I haven't watched it yet. <laughs> We'll probably do this on Sunday. Guys, I posted an a awesome video yesterday. Well, it went public yesterday. Uh, some people saw it the day before. But uh, awesome video, giving one of my favorite arguments that I just haven't emphasized enough over the years. And then as, shortly after I posted it, Fareed posts a comment, David, why don't you challenge me? <laughs> why don't you challenge me to refute this? And I go, okay, go ahead and refute it. And then <laughs> he posts a video Later, David would challenge me to refute this. <laughs> <laughs> wow, man! I actually like the guy, man. He's he's that's, he's grown he's grown on me over the years. That's funny. I actually that's like funny. Fareed. He's uh, he's cracking me up. He still needs to learn. He still needs to understand joking and stuff and yeah, sarcasm. Yeah. But you know, uh, let's see. Kusama Kajab. Don't know what that is. Spirit and flesh. Have you seen the Wall Street? Oh yeah, this is where I saw the. Well, yeah, this is what I was gonna. If the vid if the video clips didn't work, if they were audio, all, if they were all audio on one side, I was gonna divert. But have you seen the Wall Street Journal article on students' comprehension of the phrase "from the river to the sea"? Uh, educated imbeciles. Yeah, I have not. Now we know about it. I have it pulled up here, and I have a subscription to Wall Street Journal, so I can check it out. But yeah. Um, I'm assuming it's got some interesting content in there. And if so, then we will probably be bringing that up in a Journal. in a live stream. There's a great Aldous Huxley quote about bringing people over to a good cause by offering the chance to mistreat others. Yeah, that always helps. Hey, join our join our group. And then we're the group that you know, treats other people this way. And, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, oh, here we go. This one's for you, AP. Recommended reliable sources for learning about the history of how Israelis got the land. Where uh, should people go to learn about that? Because it seems like it's going to just keep coming up. And so people, it seems like an issue that can't really be resolved until people know, until the, the basic factual information becomes common knowledge, because a lot of what gets circulated is nonsense. And so I just read a bunch of, bunch of, um, papers and summaries and research and look at the historical documentation start with britannica uh i don't even have a book on my mind on that There's, although there is one that i have um which i'm trying to find uh and might get back to a brief history of something i don't know but uh i i mostly i mostly just uh learned about all of this from from articles and from papers, you know, uh -huh. not from books. Hey, hey, that might be that might be good uh, to come up with, like a little recommended resource and reading list, like even if it's mm -hmm. articles, and just give people a list of like, uh, mm -hmm. hey, here's some good articles on this, and to, and I would say like, uh, you know, get get some different perspectives on it. Uh, don't get someone who's lying from one perspective, but if someone has, you know, like if like you could get the Palestinian perspective on something as long as they're being honest and so on. And so, yeah, you might want to that would be helpful. That would be helpful to me. So why don't you do it? Why are you holding everyone back? Why are you trying to keep everyone in a state of ignorance, AP? How dare you? I would also recommend reading always um, actually uh, the Jewish state, which I have here somewhere by Theodor Herzl, very, very eye-opening and very fundamental to modern Zionism. Um, but yeah. yeah. Uh, Raymond Ibrahim, a voice exposing Islam mostly through books, uh, ATM at the moment, is open to talking with you, David. Would you be open? Sure. I know, I know, Ray, I met a Raymond. I don't know if he remembers, but yeah, I met Raymond uh, Ibrahim. We had the lunch or dinner years ago. I forget which one. I remember it was... It was at an Applebee's. It was an Applebee's. All right, let's get to, let's get to this next video. This one's kind of shorter, but this is her. This is the same Congresswoman talking to the president of University of Pennsylvania. 
Dr. Gay, a Harvard student calling for the mass murder of oh, African wait, no. Americans what is. is I've already seen that one. Got the wrong one, AP. All right, here's the correct one. No thanks to you. Ms. McGill, at Penn, does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Penn's rules or code of conduct? Yes or no? If the speech turns into conduct, it can be harassment. See, yes. that, I am thing. asking specifically did, did, did calling just... for the genocide of Jews. Yeah, it's almost like they collaborated, right? Like, let's all be yeah. on the same page. We're all going to go and say, hey, we have a high, you know, we really love freedom of expression. So if you're just say, if you're just calling for genocide, that's fine. But if you start doing the genocide, that's a problem. I think she asks her that. I think she says, what, what What do you mean conduct? Like actually doing the genocide? I think that's what she does here. Like, did, did, these, did these guys just, did these presidents like sit together and think, okay, guys, okay, guys stick to the script? How are we going to uh, spin this? How are we going to yeah, spin this? Yeah. I know. Let's all say we're all about freedom of expression. They'll fall for that, won't they? It's ridiculous. Man. can be harassment. Yes. I, I am asking, specifically calling for the genocide of Jews, does that constitute bullying or harassment? If it is directed and severe or pervasive, it is harassment. So the answer is yes. No, if it's directed. What in if the you're, world? If you're, if you're talking about a specific person and killing a specific person, then it's if it's just in general calling for genocide, they're saying no. <laughs> Freedom of expression. It has okay, to be. So so I, I'm going. I'm going out there, and I'm saying, and I'm saying, uh, yeah, yeah, Jews completely deserve to be eradicated. Jews, they should be killed. They should be massacred. Holocaust. Let's do this again. And then the clarification is just okay. Oh, wait, 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 wait. That sounds very problematic. Were you addressing a certain person when you said that? No, no, no. I'm speaking about Jews in general. Oh, okay, okay. Well, okay. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> so the answer is yes. That. It is no. a context-dependent decision. Oh my it's a goodness! There we go. That's where the context came in. So that's the second. So that's the second thing. So one, all the all the uh, presidents are saying, um, it's about when it when the speech crosses over into conduct. Now she tosses in when she's asked specifically. Okay, so calling for genocide that, that would be against it no, no no it's a context dependent now guys when someone says it it depends on the context notice what that means it means there is according to the president of the university of pennsylvania there are contexts in which you can call for genocide against jews on college campuses and it's perfectly acceptable and there's another context where it wouldn't be acceptable and you get in trouble for it the thing is, they've explained what the context is in which it wouldn't be allowed. And that's where you're actually doing something to a student or you're actually starting a genocide. That's when it's not allowed. But it depends on the context. If you're just saying it, death to Israel, death to Jews, exterminate the Jews, genocide, genocide, global intifada. That's OK. If you actually start doing it, then we got a problem. Let me back this up here because this is nuts, man. This is absolutely insane. These are the people who run the universities that everyone is sending their kids to. If it is directed and severe or pervasive, it is harassment. So the answer is yes. It is a context-dependent decision. Context dependent. It's a context-dependent decision. That's your testimony today. Calling for the genocide of Jews is depending upon the context. That is not bullying or harassment. This is the easiest question to answer yes, Ms. McGill. So is your if testimony it, that it, you will not answer yes? If it... Uh, is, Look at her grinning. Yes or becomes, no. If the speech becomes conduct, it can be harassment. Yes. Conduct meaning committing the act of genocide? The speech is not harassment? This is unacceptable, Ms. McGill. I'm going to give you one more opportunity for the world to see your one answer. More. Last chance. Does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Penn's code of conduct when it comes to bullying and harassment? Yes or no? It can why be is she grinning? The it, answer. Yeah. And why in the world is she yeah, grinning? She's this is grinning. Man. And she said, <sighs> notice what she says. It can be harassment. It can be in certain conduct, in, in certain contexts where the speech crosses over into something you're actually doing. Why the world? Why in the world would she be grinning? This is just, <laughs> it makes you. That's what's creepy, right? 
<laughs> like like this grin she's got on everything. <laughs> as long as it's in the right context, as long as you're calling the slaughter the Jews in the right context. Uh, but yeah, if someone actually started killing Jews, yeah, we would intervene. We would definitely intervene. We wouldn't allow that. Yeah, <laughs> not yet. Give us another five years. <laughs> Sicko. <laughs> People are nuts, man. I mean, this is like this is like this is like awful. In fact, I think uh, I think this congresswoman, uh, she was speaking afterwards, like on a uh, like on a news channel or something like this. She was she was saying she she was shocked, saying she was shocked at the responses they were given, and she said this is the worst thing she's ever seen at the, at these hearings. She's I've never seen anything like that. You got professors say, oh, context dependent on whether you can call for for genocide and so on. Did you see the clarification that she made? I think she made a clarification yeah, video. I thought it was lame. Video. And they, they and don't she, they don't allow they don't allow uh, comments on it. It was pathetic. Yeah, where she basically didn't answer the question at all and and just tried to make excuses for how, uh, you know, unfortunately, during the whole uh, questioning, she was focused on representing things correctly. Uh, but of course, she acknowledges that calling for a genocide of Jews is like is a is a terrible, horrible thing. But she didn't actually address the topic again. Yeah. And so and the. So she posted that. That's on Twitter. That's on uh, University of Pennsylvania's uh, Twitter page. But the the actual reason for her posting that that follow up video was, hey, I thought giving this freedom of expression, we thought this freedom of expression would go over well with Congress. Uh, everyone blasted us. A bunch of Jewish donors contacted us and said, you're sick. And they started dropping donations. So I have to act like I I have to I have to respond to this. People are nuts, man. Absolutely nuts. A couple of super chats here. Sid Dave says, imagine right wingers are defending Jewish people and it is the leftist calling for the genocide of Jews. Who would have guessed that? Well, that's what sucks. You got people on people on the far right and people on the left who are going after Jews. But yeah, you, you know what you also weird. have? You have these, <laughs> you have these idiots. Um, I get these idiots who are like uh, who are online new atheists, and who are like, "Why? Why are you? I thought you were an atheist. Why are you siding with Israel? Why are you defending Israel?" Uh, which is like, and and then the same people are like, uh, "You know, free Palestine, free Palestine," and I'm just thinking. Are you guys completely stupid, or <laughs> I don't, I don't even get it, <laughs> or I don't know. I I said um, happy Hanukkah, and 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 some people were like, "Well, I thought you were an atheist. This is disgusting. How dare you? I thought you were a real atheist. I'm going to listen to real atheists from now on." <laughs> These people, man. Yeah, it's pretty wild stuff. Every form of manipulation known to man thrown. And by the way, in this in this conflict between the Israeli state and the Palestinian entities, um, if we if we are to point at the one side that is significantly further involved in uh, religious fundamentalism and religiously driven hate, it is most definitely not the Israeli side. Yeah, it's the Palestinian side. <laughs> that is correct. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, oh! You see, he only made it. They're talking about Allah. He only made it appear that there were that there were Jews massacred in order to bring the caliphate, the great deceiver, is the best of deceiver that ever deceived. Yeah, so that's a reference to Allah tricking and tricking people into believing things which he does according to the Quran. Uh, so that would be the explanation. What 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 accounts for all this uh, footage of all these uh, all these massacres? Ah, Allah just made it seem that way. Well, that would explain things, wouldn't it? Jeff says, during the Holocaust, pastors kept silent. I will not be in that category. I've, I've, uh, I've got several hundred people each week. I let no stand. I let no stand up for the Jews. And by the way, that's actually I don't. I haven't talked about this, but that's kind of, that's part of my reasoning. It's a, a kind of sense of like communal guilt. Like if my let's suppose my grandfather like killed your grandfather and it screwed up his, it screwed up your, your entire family and it's, it's messed up your life and stuff like that. If I can actually do something to fix what my grandfather, like the, what my grandfather did to your family and how it affected your family and so on, I think I should, that's something I should actually do. Well, if people in the past, if people in the past, if Christians in the past didn't, uh, 
didn't stand up for Jews when people were slaughtering them, okay, then you you need to be aware of that. And if you say, okay, previous gener previous generations of Christians really screwed up, okay, well, that means you need to do whatever you can to not make that same mistake now. <laughs> what are you laughing at, weirdo? Um, my 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 wife just left a comment saying that uh, that the University of Pennsylvania or that 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 Penn lost a lot bunch of money in donations and i'm just seeing uh i'm seeing the the some some news reports first off uh calls for or an emergency meeting because of calls for uh resignations and also a major donor rescinds uh 100 million dollars in donations wow to the I mean, university think, about, think about how I mean, how many scholarships that is, how much funding that is for uh, for research and so on. Wow. Yeah. It, and, and by the way, doesn't that make it even worse as far as the as, as far as how I think about the president of the university? It's like you're saying with a freaking grin on her face. I mean, she was saying it smiling. Uh, yeah, you know, it depends on the context in which you're calling for genocide. Are you actually doing it or are you just calling for it? Because that, you know, that that's that would... And then she loses tons of piles and piles of money and people are calling her calling for her resignation. Oh, let me post this follow up response to clarify some things. Well, now it's just now it's all about money, right? That That's worse. I mean, it's worse if here's your here's you stating your actual views. Oh, but you'll say some additional stuff when you start losing money over people hearing your actual views. Now you're just a, a money grubbing uh, college president who doesn't want to be embarrassed and doesn't want, I mean, think about this. I mean, if you do enough damage to university, you're gone and people aren't going to want you as president of their university anymore. So she's got to clean up her mess. I hope, I hope she can't do it. Oh, I, I see a report now. It says, um, so, uh, Ross, uh, what was that? What was the name? Ross Stevens, founder and CEO of Stone Ridge Asset Management, uh, wrote in a letter that um, he is about to um, take back his one hundred million dollar donation to the university. Nice. Uh, if Elizabeth McGill does not step down. <laughs> nice. That's how you do it. <laughs> hundred wow. million dollars. I'm taking it back or get rid of her. Wow. <laughs> Oh, let, well, I'll, I'll post a two minute follow up video on Twitter. That'll smooth things over. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's nice. Um, all right. We've got we've got one more video clip I wanted to go through where a dude is. Uh, just, uh, he's pretty brutal. Well, nice guy, but he's uh, he gets pretty he's a smart dude. Let me check out a smart dude here. Uh, Sid Dave says, uh, do you believe in replacement theory? I think white liberals will realize they are being replaced by jihadists in left parties, but it will be too late. Jihadists don't believe anything white liberals stand for. Um, as far as jihadis, uh, yeah, I mean, it is an interesting alliance, the left and, uh, and the jihadis. They both think, okay, we'll unite against common common opponents but then we'll settle out our diff we'll settle our differences later and that each side thinks that things will go in their direction how about no yeah i say how about no uh have you seen rabbi sachs whiteboard video on the connections between anti-semitism and anti-zionism you familiar with that i'm not nope Rabbi no. Sachs, Rabbi Sachs. Remember that, Rabbi Sachs. Rabbi Sachs. Uh, my name is Sean. What is this? Is it? What is this? Is this Turkish? It's got the weird symbols on it. It is Turkish. Uh, <laughs> what? What? Oh, is that some leather strap of the anus? No, 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 okay, no, no. These, these are the lyrics to some to an old song that was like uh, that was that became very popular by some singer named Tarkan back in the day, like 20, 25 or 30. I don't even know how long ago. <laughs> Where did that come from? That song was, was very popular in Europe. That's funny. Let's see. Sid Dave here says, the West created Israel. They should have also partitioned Egypt, Middle East further to create a nation for Copts, 
Middle Eastern Christians. Big mistake. Yeah, keep in mind, guys, um, Western nations defeated the Ottoman Empire. And, oh, as, such, defeat and them. as such, were able to take certain steps to ensure that the Ottoman Empire did not come and fight them again. That's what you do in a war. Um, if you, if you, you know, if you're the United States and you defeat the Japanese, you take steps to ensure that they cannot attack you again and so on. Um, and so, yeah, one of the things that was done was they get to, they got to parcel up, parcel up land that they controlled. And, uh, AP, how much do you think, because I've seen people suggest that Israel's I created- yeah, you talk too much too, because I'm trying to make a point. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I've seen people suggest that Israel was deliberately um, created by the West to add permanent instability to the area, to make that a focus, and to keep um, to keep Islam from targeting the rest of the world. How much do you think? It's that versus just, no, Jews have a point. They need a place of their own. They're just massacred by the millions in Europe. And therefore, we need to uh, actually make sure they have a spot. And that's a good one because they have some historical ties to it. Which I, do, I, I honestly... Against? I honestly think um, so. It, it was it was a project that was in um, it was a British project which was um, suggested and then declared in the uh, the Balfour Declaration that there would be a um, a backing for a Jewish homeland for a Jewish state in the um, in, in the region which they had under their control, which they considered uh, the mandate for Palestine. Which, by the way, did not just include the historic Palestine uh, as they call it now, but also Jordan. Um, to be honest, I think it's hard to tell um, what the what the exact motive for, was for the future, but um, I don't even consider it. I don't even think it was a very um, a very uh, what do you call that a good willed project on on the British part because to them it was basically like getting rid of the getting rid of the Jews mm. who are who are trouble, who are too much trouble for them. <laughs> yeah, because the, the reason the reason for suspicion, you know, apart yeah. from apart from what, you know, the, the conflict is still ongoing and, and Muslims attention is constantly geared towards doing something about Israel. Um, if you really were, just wanted to make a safe space for Jews because you realize there are problems. Yeah. Why wouldn't you have done something for you know the cops and and uh, and Christians in Iraq or something like that. Why wouldn't you have said, okay, now here this part of Turkey, this goes to you know this goes to the Armenians and this group. Like, why wouldn't you have just divided up the land and and given other groups control of their own lands if you're trying if you're trying to keep people from being subjugated. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think uh, altruistic is the word I'm, I was, I'm, I'm looking for. So I think it wasn't very altruistic. Um, the whole project to establish uh, to establish a Jewish land. Uh, what, what what the British thought is that um, they they conquered a bunch. They now have different values. They no longer do the whole um, expansion and colonizing stuff. They have to collaborate with the uh, uh, the League of Nations, which is the um, the, the, the 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 what what which was in, in in place before the United Nations came into existence, and um, by the standards of that, they had to um, if they take land from an empire, they have to um, engage in nation building, which basically means they have to use the land to somehow create a nation for um, for the populations that live there. However, they can twist things as they see fit uh, because they are technically in charge of the land. So um, they thought the Jews have had a long history of um, be, being repressed in Europe. They have a point. Plus, we don't really like dealing with the Jews. They are a headache to us. Um, so therefore, why not just create this thing here? where they can have their own land and the Arabs can also have their own land. Of course, the, the British uh, did a very lousy job, many people would admit, because um, 
apparently they didn't really think it through and they didn't really consider that the Arabs uh, probably don't want to live together with the Jews. So, <laughs> All right, yeah. you heard it here, folks. According to AP, all British people are anti-Semites who want to get rid of Jews. And that is the real cause of the nation of Israel becoming a thing. Yes. You heard it here. Uh, Zippy says, love both of you. Have you seen Dr. J. Smith? Come on. Have I seen Dr. J. Smith? I've known J. Smith for a million years. Who's J. Uh, Smith? He has some great insights into Islam. Also, did you show AP his angry Muslim cousin preaching in anger? Which cousin was that? Which cousin was that? I don't know. Was that one of the... Uh, was that one of those uh, memory clips? Mm -hmm. uh, Sid Dave says, Harvard is slowly becoming a madrasa. Yeah. And it guys, is. you just you just wonder. See, you have to... You shouldn't just focus on what's in front of you right now. It's the trajectory, as Hijab would say. It's the trajectory. Where, where, where are things heading, right? If you're saying, oh, look look how rapidly things shifted and how quickly it became totally acceptable to call for genocide on college campuses. Look how quickly that happened. Okay, what's the direction things are heading? Because that's why, that's why you need to take steps to make sure this doesn't get worse. Because uh, if things can change that quickly, uh, there's not a lot standing in the way of things getting worse, except you. Understand? No, no you. No you. No you. She keeps, she keeps malfunctioning. Beep, bat, boop. She keeps malfunctioning. Beep, bat, boop. Uh, Mordecai, blah, blah, blah. And JNS says, Mo. If the trajectory continues like. Okay, go ahead. go ahead. Says, Mo Brothers Revolution are enemies of Wahhabi, suggests Islam failed, says Emirates on tribal roots would result in more peace. Emirates on tribal roots would result in more peace. What are you nodding for? You agree with this? I don't know. I don't no, even you know, know anything. Wait, yeah, you don't even know anything. Uh, Sophia. All right, let's go ahead and watch this uh, last video clip. You ready? No. I forget who this was because I downloaded a bunch of clips and I pulled up five. Let's see. President Gay, I was taken by. Uh, he I said Gay. This guy. It's her name. What's wrong oh, with you? Okay. You see this? You see what I have to deal with, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> see the level of childishness I have to constantly have to deal with? <laughs> this the guy. This I uh, think okay. this is the guy who comes. He comes off and he's really, really nice, and he just makes an awesome point by the end but let's see i don't rem i don't remember where he went with this but i remember thinking oh, this guy's kind of nice and slow and calm and let's see some words in your your opening statement where you said cure for anti-semitism is knowledge mm -hmm. uh, i would i would go where angels fear to tread and, and suggest that it might be better going back to the original motto idea for Harvard, which was Veritas, mm -hmm. truth, mm -hmm. that the cure for anti-Semitism is not simply knowledge. It's truth. Knowledge puffs up. Oh, you know I mean? he quoted the Bible. He quoted the Bible. That was a, right. that was a Christian dog whistle there. That was based. So knowledge puffs up. Sometimes based upon falsehoods. See, he said Look, based. He said based that's what yeah. we're facing right now. Uh, in, in the climate on campuses is that we're missing the fact of truth um, and allowing, under the guise of free speech, uh, knowledge that isn't true to be exhibited in actions as well. So President Gay, in, in the weeks since October 7th, and again in your testimony, you have said that Harvard's commitment to free speech extends to views that are objectionable or, are, or outrageous. Are you aware that Harvard is ranked dead last on the 2024 Foundation of Individual Rights and Expression Scorecard of Universities on Freedom of Speech? Okay, so this is before the other congresswoman brought it up. He brings it up. Harvard is dead last when it comes to freedom of expression, and yet Harvard is using its commitment to freedom of expression as the justification for allowing calls for genocide against Jews. So he brings us up, and we can have her response here. That's pretty big. Thank you, Congressman, for the, the question. Um, respectfully, I disagree with that perspective as represented in the report that you cited. I, I disagree with the report. Don't think it's an accurate representation 
of how Harvard treats speech on campus. We are committed to free expression uh -huh. um, and to <laughs> making space for a wide range of views and perspectives on our campus. With all due respect, this let, is, this let me is, move this on a bit. This is bedrock. I, I, would, I would expect that you wouldn't agree with that. I understand that. And I would expect that the University of Penn, the same would be true, that you wouldn't agree that you're second to last. Whoa! Did you hear that? Hey, hey, P, you hear that? Yes. He goes, uh, he, he says, I would expect you wouldn't agree with that. And I would expect President of Penn not to agree with the fact that you're second to last. So th those are the two worst universities in the nation, Harvard and Penn, in terms of freedom of speech, freedom of expression. Uh, and, and this is studied by, you know, seeing what happens to students and, and uh, what happens to professors and so on. And so these these guys are dead last. Another one's saying, well, of course, the reason you could call for genocide is because of our great commitment to freedom of expression, you liars. That same scorecard. But uh, President Gay, did you know that 70 percent of Harvard students say that shouting down a speaker is acceptable? 70 percent. That is not OK. I appreciate that. It seems that perhaps Harvard's commitment to free speech is pretty selective. As you are no doubt aware, prominent alumnus Bill Ackman tweeted you a letter on Sunday. And in that letter, and I have that tweet, I guess that's the beauty of social media. You can get those things. Oh, is that how it works? <laughs> it's good he's explaining the benefits of social media to us. You know, back in my day, we had the Pony Express. <laughs> <laughs> then we came out with the telegram <laughs> and now we've got social media anyway. in that letter he highlighted two cases of harvard faculty members who were canceled because of views deemed too controversial for your campus tyler j vanderweel was deemed guilty for those crimes related to his views on marriage and abortion and then carl uh, carol hooven an evolutionary biologist was forced to resign because she stated that a person's sex is biological and binary. So an evolutionary biologist, Harvard professor, forced to resign because she thinks that sex is a biological issue. I mean, a person's sex is a biological issue. But did that and cross over into conduct? No, it didn't cross over into conduct. Yeah, it must have crossed over into conduct. She, she must have gone around killing and slaughtering people who identify as a, as a different gender. No, crossing over into conduct would just be like having, having sex. <laughs> Mr. Ackerman's letter also included quotes from a number of faculty highlighting the culture of fear that pervades Harvard's campus for those with views out of step with campus orthodoxy. Mm -hmm. And so, President Gay, in what world is a call for violence against Jews protected speech? Wow. But a belief that sex is biological and binary isn't? That's a good question, isn't it? Yeah. On what, on what planet? On what planet? So, so, so suppose you, you're saying you're committed to freedom of speech. On what planet is calling for genocide against Jews that's protected. But me saying, hey, I think, uh, you know, I think gender is this or that. That's not. And you have to be crushed. Thank you for well, your question. So from the moment that our students arrive on campus, whether it is to begin their Harvard journey as an undergraduate or at one of the professional schools, the message to them is clear that we are an inclusive community, but yeah. one deeply committed to free expression. Uh -huh. And that means that we have expectations that that right is exercised mindfully and with empathy towards others. Even if you're calling for genocide. We reinforce uh -huh. that during their time at Harvard by helping them build the skills that allow them to engage in constructive dialogue, even on the most complex and divisive issues. Because we what we seek is not simply free expression, but the sure. reason dialogue that leads to truth and discovery and that does the work of moving us all.
Look, she picked up on this guy saying, I think truth is what's important. Said, yes, we're, we're geared towards uh, fostering a community where we where we work towards truth. My goodness, man. We, we always make sure to force all our students to listen to genocidal speech, to listen to others when they say, uh, you don't have a right to exist. We always make sure that they listen to those who want uh, them killed uh, because this is how things are done here. <laughs> free expression, but the reason dialogue that leads to truth and discovery, and that does the work of moving us all forward. We but, don't always but, get it but, right, and our students don't always get it right. And when they transgress, they're come held under accountable. That as well, don't they? Your professors come under that as well, don't they? Absolutely. And so for Professor Vanderweel and Hoven, that didn't work for them. The free expression of views, at the very least, views, whether fact or truth, I guess we'll leave that to understanding, but nonetheless, they were removed from their positions. And I think that sends a message, a message in this case with Jewish students, that they're of less importance. I yield back. Burn. S sends a message. Jeez. When I, say, when I say, hey, you can't criticize that person's view or we'll destroy you, but you can call for the extermination of Jews you're making it sound like uh, you just don't care about Jews. That was that was pretty. He should have dropped his mic there. He should have. That would have been awesome, wouldn't it? I yield yeah. back. Yeah. Boom! Dropped it. Yeah. With an explosion yeah. sound. Yeah. Uh, all right. So yeah, guys. Uh, again, there's he like could five... be the explosion stuff with his mouth. It could be like he could drop it and then go like boom. boom. <laughs> yeah. And then and then lean forward and go. That just happened. <laughs> all right guys so again there's a there's a there's a lot of those clips there are a lot of those clips uh good to get some of that information and share it because this is really creepy stuff and guess what the outrage actually people pointing out this stuff does make a difference right because people finding out about this stuff that does uh, that does affect the donors and so on. And then the donors, they get to call some shots on who actually runs these universities. So it, it would really be awesome for these people to just lose their jobs and then other people get put into place who are not going to put up with this nonsense. Yeah. And that matter of fact, that that should be a condition for anyone who's donating to these universities. Hey, I'm not sending you. I am not sending you a penny, Harvard. I'm not sending you a penny, University of Pennsylvania. I'm not sending you a penny, MIT, until you take some steps to end this nonsense here. Um, all right, we'll go with a few super chats and then we'll head out. What could be the end goal for these universities to not condemn this kind of talk? Context. Uh, so. What's the end goal? Well, notice if they say. <laughs> so the question is, why would they not just condemn it and say, hey, they're being asked how this violates their policies. So here's the issue. If they say, yes, it goes against our policies to call for genocide. And so the question is, why are you allowing them to do it? So the issue is, why haven't you done anything? And so the issue that's being brought up to them is. Of course, why haven't you done anything if it's against your policies? Is it against your policies? The moment they say it's against their policies, then why aren't you enforcing your policies? And so they have to explain why they're not enforcing their policies. Why they, they would have to explain why they're not enforcing their policies. And so they took the short route. Well, it's not really against their policies unless it, it crosses over into action. So they're, they're looking for a way to justify not taking action against people who are calling for genocide. Yeah. And they went with the they went with what they thought would be most appealing to the American people. Just say, hey, it's about freedom of expression. That's why we're doing it, which they sound like a bunch of idiots when these these universities, which, as was pointed out, there's number one and number two in the university. I mean, in the entire university system for being worst at allowing freedom of expression on their campuses. So total hypocrisy. To no one's buying any of it. They thought it might work. It didn't. And now they're embarrassed. And it would not it would not surprise me for all of these people to lose their jobs because the wow. university, the universities, the board of trustees, all these guys are going to have to. Hundreds of millions of dollars in funding is more important to them than whoever is president at the university. So. 
Uh, Zippy here says, my auntie is an off the deep end conspiracy theorist. She believes that the Jews made Nazism and Hitler. Yeah, that would be off the deep end conspiracy stuff. So Dave says, Israeli. I, I heard the same thing. And I also, I mean, I, I had to, I had conversations a long time ago when I was a Muslim, of course. Uh, there was always, um, there was an unlimited uh, amount of, you know, accepted conspiracy theories when it came to Jews. So therefore, I always, I, I heard the worst, dumbest things, including that Hitler was a, a Jew, that he was, uh, that he worked together with the Jews uh, to, in this evil project to kill some Jews and then to exaggerate the number to just create a home for the Jews to then oppress the Muslims and all kinds of nonsense like that. All of that is very funny if you actually look at uh, Hitler's own writings, his own speeches. Always back to Hitler own, with you. My goodness. <laughs> and his own and his meetings, documents written down by, by German officials where he explicitly plans to go to the Arab world and eradicate the Jews. But yeah, people just want to believe anything. That they do. Israelis should offer a challenge to Palestinians to produce a book better than the Quran. <laughs> if the Palestinians can, they get the land, lol. <laughs> put, them in, put them a little, uh, little catch-22 there. Guys, we'll give you the land if you can produce a book better than the Quran. That's that's funny. That's smart. Yeah, that would be awesome. Uh, get it smart. says, didn't Jesus... Didn't Jesus order the killings of babies or maybe when he ordered women to be stoned to death if they prove their virginity, Deuteronomy? What in the world is this guy talking about? I mean, I know what he's talking about, but like what in the name of common sense does have to do with what we're talking about here? And by the way, you might want to actually. Uh, we've been through that. We went through the we went through the first Samuel passage. And then in a recent live stream, I don't remember where that was, the, the Numbers 31 passage, which is another group is totally wiped out passage. Oh, this was on John McRae. This was on John McRae's live stream. Check out the live stream we did when we were at ETS. This got brought up. We actually uh, examined this. It's the same. It's the same issue. So in first Samuel, you have the Amalekites being completely wiped out till there are none left. And then later on, there are Amalekites there. And you have the same thing here that the Moabites get completely wiped out in Numbers 31. They're completely wiped out. And what did I say in that live stream? I said, and then go to Judges, which is later. Go to Judges chapter 6. Start reading. The Moabites come in and conquer the Jews. How, do you, how does a group that has been completely exterminated and genocided come and then wipe you out? I just um, we've already yeah I would sit here I would sit here and explain it we've already done a live stream check out our live stream on first Samuel 15 you'll see the issue and uh, next time try to be on topic <laughs> yeah uh, Nisanetic pervasiveness contributes heavily contributes heavily to harassment that's true so spreading the claim making it popular making it common that would tend to lead to the harassment that they say is things are crossing over into. In other words, you let if you let people keep spreading the calls for genocide, then when you actually get the behavior that you have to do something about, wait a minute, why did you get the behavior? Because he popularized it. Uh, no one knows how. It's a mystery. Uh, let's see. Chloe, uh, get it? No, Jesus is perfect. Stop lying. Um, Sonny says, if a student called for genocide of professors, what would be the answer? Spelled incorrectly due to the YouTube. Yeah, if someone <laughs> that'd be funny. If someone's going if students started going around calling matter of fact, imagine the Jewish students who are fed up with the with the professors and with the uh and with the administration going around, okay, since you guys are saying it's fine, calling for genocide. We call for genocide against professors. How let how you like that? How's that feel? That feel good? You like that? Huh? That's what I'd be doing. First, they came for the professors. Yeah, no, I think uh, I think a lot of a lot of Jews are responding entirely appropriately. You've got the students calling things out, and you've got the donors saying, "Yep, there are some repercussions now." Uh, she grins like a <laughs> she grinned like a gin on her momo chin, licking his win. What, Chloe? <laughs> 
She does. Oh, that's Chloe. Yeah. That was yeah, that I, was creepy. Yeah. That woman grinning while she's <laughs> depends on the context. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's the worst thing when you are in such a serious uh in a in such a serious confrontation and a person uh is is pressing you and being outraged with what you're saying and pressing the issue again mm -hmm. pushing you to say something and you're like hmm. like <sighs> yeah that congresswoman could have totally said that why why are you grinning right now what is wrong with you we're talking about genocide and students on your campus, students and professors calling for genocide on your campus, and you're smiling about it. I would. Been good. That makes that makes you want to punch the person for the, who's grinning. That, yeah, that, that's. And guess yeah. what? Guess what? There were some big mega millions donors watching that, going, "Oh, you want to grin? Huh? Well, I'm a grin as I'm giving your money to somebody else." Actually, no, because the university will get rid of you over this if I tell them. I'm keeping this $100 million until you get rid of this lady. Boom. She gone. Nice. Starcher says, I've sadly seen many Christians acting coldly towards Jews. Not here, buddy. Not here, Mr. Archer. Even mild conspiracy level stuff like we can't be true Christians if we ally with Jews. No, that's, uh, I'd have to say that's nonsense. No, 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 no. You're, you're right as far as you, you seeing it. But uh, the idea that we can't be true Christians if we... Uh, ally with Jews. That's a Muslim belief, right? He who takes the Jews or Christians as allies is one of them. Oh, yes. And it also says, by the way, that Jews and Christians, uh, they will never like you and uh, that you shouldn't be their allies because they are allies of one another. So it, it, it directly groups Jews and Christians together as the evil ones who conspire against the Muslims. Here you've, been, here you've been schooled again, AP. Only true atheists support fundamentalist Islam. <laughs> you're not a you're not a real you're not a real atheist, man. That's basically what it sounds like nowadays with some of the online atheists. You didn't leave atheism. Atheism left you. <laughs> man. Uh, what would Bonhoeffer say? Is it happening again? Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, Bonhoeffer was a guy who was a, a Christian uh, pastor and theologian who was involved in a plot to kill Hitler. Interesting fellow. Boxing. Wait, okay. Apostle Prophet is Apostle Prophet? You're the Apostle? Hey, hey, if you were if you became a Christian, you could be the Apostle Prophet. That would be funny. Uh, wait, Apostle Prophet is married? Genuine question. As an atheist, how do you navigate a secular marriage? What's the main standout? <laughs> Talk about well, off, talk about going off topic. Well, that's all right. We're at the end, so go ahead. Uh, it, it's not it's not very different from a religious uh, marriage and religious. No, but you don't believe you don't believe except, in love. You believe that love is just a chemical reaction in your head. How can you how can you believe that? Yeah, no, yeah, we we, we do we do that. So there, there is a difference, but you basically get used to it. Uh, what we do is like we don't do regular, uh, you know, traditional, uh, you know, um, conversations. We don't, uh, it is all completely built on, um, you know, procreation and the social and, uh, you know, the utility of being social, the utility of coming together and being in a relationship of, of making uh, babies. Like when we talk about, um, you know, we, for example, we don't say, I love you. We don't say, oh, hey, uh, I love you so much. Hey, you are my wife. You're my husband. We just say we are partners and we acknowledge this. Uh, we we eat we eat babies sometimes, <laughs> but those are just the details, which are which are of course which are which are a different topic that we could go lengthy into. All right, so you got your uh, you got your answer box string. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, draw your own conclusion. Says now now the uh, yeah so it's cool the uh, the actual channel name is draw your own conclusions. D. Wood makes concise points. Christian, AP, bab, blabbers on and on. Atheist, draw your own conclusions. <laughs> That's true. Bulldozer, I will give you money to look up God, Syria, Bashar. You don't have to give us no. money to look something like that up. If you give me money, I will not look it up. Yes, you'll give me money and then I'll never look it up. Ha ha. Yeah. If, if, you, if you give me the more money you give me, the less I, likely I will be to look it up. Yeah, you don't need to give me money for this, but I'm just interested in what you're trying to point out here. God, Syria. Oh, it's a song. 
Okay, it's a song. God Bashar in Syria. Oh, that's funny. It's uh, God Syrian Bashar is a patriotic pro Assad song by Rami Kazur. Okay, that sounds terrible. Yeah, that sounds awful, but it, it sounds <laughs> it's, it's hilarious concept. So I, I will check that out later. Um, hey, AP, have you heard of the Iraqi black metal band Seeds of Iblis? They are on YouTube. <laughs> Actually, I think I have. I think I listened uh, to something from them, which I found interesting, funny. Of course, not my thing, but uh, <laughs> I did hear of it. Yeah. Uh, Zippy here says a German Muslim preacher gets angry during the speech. What is that? Is that the reference to uh, AP's cousin earlier? A German Muslim preacher. <laughs> Wait, are you talking about um, what's his name? What's his name? What's his name? There's this guy called Pierre Fogel um, who adopted a name uh, Abu something something. You, of course, always have have to be Arabized. But um, there's this guy in Germany who is a Salafi Muslim who was once a boxer, I believe, who has these preachings where he starts yelling. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's nice. Get it. Got to play some clips of that sometime. Uh, Planet Uranus has a leather-like ring around. <laughs> <laughs> God, uh, here's one for you, AP. Uh, D. Wood stays professional. Christian, AP. Ha ha, he said gay. Atheist, <laughs> draw your own conclusions. People have, people, they make some good points here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some they're, basically historic- saying, they're basically saying being an atheist is fun, so. Some historians think Christian Zionism is older than the Jewish one. Puritans in 1580s talking about their restoration to Israel originating both. I would suspect that there were always Jews who wanted to get their get their Jewish state back. But yes, you were right there. There have been Christians who wanted that to happen. There were always Jewish movements that uh, that believed in um, taking it back, that believed in um, an uprising, that believed in peacefully taking it back, that believed in waiting for it and eventually taking it back, or that said, "God will make things right in the future. We just have to just just have to just have to you know uh, follow his his commandments and all of that." Uh, that was there throughout all of history. The idea of Zionism was there. But the, 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 the modern, what's called modern Zionism developed in the, in, in the 19th, uh, 19th and 20th century. But before that, the ideas were, were already there. Uh, why do leftists call Israel an apartheid state, but not Islamic nations where non-Muslim men can't marry Muslim women, have no religion? Stop being freedom? Islamophobic. Yeah, got a point. Uh, totally different rules for different groups. Um, Stop being Islamophobic. What is this? Mm-hmm. It's Nazi. Alyosha says, what atheists don't realize, this is you, AP, what atheists don't realize is that the Frankenstein, is that Frankenstein eventually returns to the lab. In other words, you create a monster, that monster comes back. But that's the monster of Frankenstein. That's not actually a Frankenstein. Yeah, that's true. The, the Frankenstein monster. Yes. The monster. Yes. That's a monstrosity. You guys should look at Jawahar of ancient no. India and in, do it. No. In one of which 16,000 women self-immolated to avoid rape, capture, and torture by Muslim invaders. Interesting. Dang. I read, I read so much horrifying stuff in uh, Robert Spencer's History of Jihad that I... Have forgotten most of it. There's like it's just like you you realize it's never jihad has never stopped since the time of Muhammad. It's just been endless. Um, and there you look at that and go, how does no one know about this? How does no one know about that? How does no one know about this? Chapter after chapter after chapter, no one knows any of this stuff. At most, people know about the very early stage uh, with um, with uh, with with Muhammad and his companions, and then someone might know a bare minimum about uh, the Crusades, and then they know modern jihad. And uh, not everything that happened in between. And there's so much in there that it's like, it's too, it's too much. It's too much to even like keep in your head. 
Jeez, this is actually what? wow. I, did, I I wasn't aware of this. Johar um, was a Hindu practice of of mass self immolation, setting yourself on fire, um, by women and girls in the Indian subcontinent to avoid capture, enslavement, and rape by Turco Persian Islamic invaders when facing certain defeat during a war. So they would rather burn themselves to death than be used by the Muslims. I wonder uh -huh. why. I thought they would be treated wonderfully. Jeez, I, 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 did, I didn't. I actually didn't know about this. It the, there would be a uh, when they are when they are sure that there is no chance of a victory that they are going to be conquered and taken over. They would do mass self burning, mass suicide instead of becoming captives and be raped. Jeez. That's hardcore there. Uh, Grays, that, that might be something you want to share, AP. That might be a little video at some point. Grays174 says, to be fair, not sure that the college students hate Jews specifically. It's just whoever can fit into the racist colonizer oppressing minorities trope. I think they hate Jews specifically as well. Seeking Dawkins, Finding Jesus says, D. Wood, uh, what translation are you using to study now? Still NASB, any commentaries or study Bibles you recommend? Uh, most recent Bible I've been using is, is ESV, but that's a, in the same ballpark as NASB. Those are the more literal, literal translations. Um, commentaries, uh, as far as study Bibles, uh, ESV study Bibles is awesome. That thing's packed with... Uh, packed with stuff. It's, it's the mother of all study Bibles. Let's see. D. Wood, did you allow, what do you mean to interview William Lane Craig and not tell him about the leather strap of the anus? The world needs his take on this pressing issue. <laughs> yeah, I was talking, I made a video where I was talking to Craig and I showed him the clip of uh, Yusuf Estes saying that the Catholic Church was started in the third century BC by Alexander the Great in Rome. <laughs> And just William Lake Craig going, that is bizarre. That is like, you just thought it was hilarious. But yeah, he might be more impressed by some of the awesome quotes of Muhammad. Uh, Prashir says, I read online that India is the most pro-Israel country on earth. I have seen tons and tons of Hindus on Twitter saying they support Israel. Most pro-Israel co uh, content on Twitter is coming from India. Any guesses why? Yeah. Common enemy. They they like they understand it. Like like in fact, if if anyone under there are certain groups of Christians who understand it, most Christians do not understand it. But uh yeah, Hindus understand what it's like to uh to be sort of surrounded by and by people who want to completely annihilate and subjugate you and so on. Mm -hmm. So they get it. The eyes are the leather strap of the anus, Mo. A prostate prophet. <laughs> a prostate S -s prophet. Seriously, uh, there are lots of um, people who, who pointed out uh, Jewish people too. I mean, I, I recently had a conversation with that guy from Speaker's Corner, um, uh, Yosef, who is uh, who, who has that channel, Israel Advocacy Movement. He also immediately mentioned uh, mentioned Hindus as a group that really firmly stands with them right now but also um lots of you know christians and other people around the world but um there there, there really is a lot of um hindu support and hindu sympathy for israelis which i guess um people didn't really expect on such a scale that's very nice mm -hmm. yep they get it uh, Dr. D. Wood, I have 50 milligram of Ali Dawa's orgasm enhancer. Should I apply it to my eyes of the leather strap of the anus? I don't know. Follow the directions when you get Ali Dawa's orgasm intensifier pills that he sells uh, on his videos. <laughs> Timothy says, AP, atheist, atheist, D. Wood, Christian, Christian, draw your own conclusions. That is a good point. Right Whoa. There. Whoa, that's the best so far. That is powerful. Uh, we need Shake Your Booty on here. Ooh, yeah, we should start getting Shake Your Booty in one of these. Yeah, I don't know where he is. Uh, you are starting to look and dress alike. What? I'm not dressing alike? Who? Look alike? What are you talking about? He's Turkish. 
Yeah. Yeah. Karen. Sharon is Karen. My nuts. Uh, my nuts. Wonderful show. Alhamdulillah. Shake my nuts. <laughs> 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 What are you laughing? These are the people that come over from a- AP's channel when we go live on my good Christian channel, and then they follow they follow him over. Oh boy, that's good. All right, last one here. Add to broadcast. I discovered God Syria Bashar. Yeah, I still have it. I am going to check that out because uh, I'm interested in how what what kind of quality is going to be. I discovered God Syria Bashar from being dubbed over a Warriors amateur flash animation called Firestar Hates Waffles. What? I got to take a screenshot of this because, uh, or I'll just check it out later. But yeah, okay. There's a bunch of stuff in there. Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, what do we got coming up, AP? Tomorrow we were going to go live um, and we are going to have a look at uh, some related things. And on Saturday we are going to go live and we're going to review... Um, that movie submission, which was Classic. made by Ayanna Ali and Theo Van Gogh and led to the killing of Theo Van Gogh by a Muslim who also threatened to kill Ayanna Ali and Geert Wilders. That recently came up because Geert Wilders uh, had a real victory in the elections in the Netherlands. So we're going to do that. It's going to be, it's going to be good. I have to say, I have to say, I we've been. Too. We've been relentless over the years in sort of making it more acceptable, making the, you know, making the criticism of Islam more acceptable. And just think, you have to, you you go not too long ago and you make a film just criticizing Islam's treatment of women and people had to die over it, right? Dude had to, dude... Theo Van Gogh was killed. I on Hersey Ali. I mean, they had to put like bulletproof glass on her house and stuff like this. And she eventually had to get out of there Yeah. over that. Meanwhile, I mean, we're sitting here eating the Quran, smoking the Quran. What happens? Nothing. Why? Because we're changing the world, ladies and gentlemen. We're changing the world. They tried to, they tried to silence us. They failed. But th- that that is true. Those people, um, Theo Van Gogh and and the others who made the cartoons, the people at, uh, at at Charlie Hebdo who were targeted and killed, the ones who, after them, um, continued with the with with the cartoons and all of that. P- people like these, they they paved the way. They made it possible for um, for us to be more comfortable to sit here and to criticize and to mock and we are today doing the very same thing and i guess taking one for the team and and make and and paving the way and making it possible for others to also have it easier when they respond to islam and when they mock islam this is what we're doing and, and that's the entire purpose that's the entire reason of it i don't care about uh about ripping up a book i don't care about ripping up paper but there there is there is an importance there is a meaning to this if people are killed because of this if people are if people are, people's lives are threatened because of this or because of a cartoon then it's probably a noble act i would say on our part to normalize this so that people don't have to die as a result of this anymore you see what atheists do hey Hey, we need to make something awesome and artistic like submission. Yes. You know what I mean? Something that's making an awesome point, but it is also like uh, brilliant and awesomely stylized and so on. You know what? Vocab, I think he recorded it on his own, but that would be, uh, I, I, I would like, uh, like more something more cinematic. But Vocab wrote an entire spoken word poem, right? So it's a spoken word style, uh, slam poetry style, but he's a seventh century Arab poet doing a spoken word poem about Muhammad killing all the poets who criticized him. (laughs) 
that's mad scientist level. That's something I wouldn't mind recording, but like really, uh, really doing an awesome job of it. That's cool. Like getting some professional, uh, professional, uh, professional level uh, recording. That would be awesome. Yeah, we got to do that. I want to hook that up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, what are good sources that debunk anti-Jew hatred? It's all over the place, man. Just listen to your heart. Well, yeah, listen, listen to your heart. heart. Yeah. Release the good. That's what you do. All right, everyone. So we'll catch you all tomorrow on AP's channel. It will be dope. In the meantime, since we're talking about songs and musical preferences, oh, lead you out with the greatest song of all time. Islam's not for me. Islam's not for me.